Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to open up October's meeting of the Conservation Commission. Uh, did the members get a chance to read the minutes of September 18th? Yes, sir. Yes. If they noted no errors or omissions, I will entertain a motion to accept them and place them on file. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? We have a notice of intent, a continued notice of intent to raise an existing home and construct a new single family dwelling for Brian and Kelly Kelly at 335th Street. I had a discussion with Kurt Young from WPI, Wetlands Preservation Inc., and informed him that prior to coming in, he was going to have to re notify his abutters because it's been such a long time. Uh, he agreed to do that, so it would be my recommendation that we continue this hearing to the November 20th date. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Uh, we have a continued notice of intent to construct a single-family home from Plum Island Blue LLC at 17 C Fordham Way. Is anybody here to represent them? Uh, uh, <clears throat> Jen, do we have the file on that? Can you can you find out when that was uh, presented? First presented. Looks like the first meeting date was June 20, 2017. Okay, at least still have some time. You have two years, so. Um, it would be my recommendation that we grant a continuance to Plum Island Blue, um, also to the November 20th date. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have a continued amended notice of intent to re make repairs to resource areas, uh, DEP number 50-1243 from Eric Sorensen. Uh, he has withdrawn that request. Do you have that piece of paper that was... We received an email from him after I spoke to him, and he says uh, that if the golf center has fulfilled its requirements and satisfied conservation with our mitigation plan, uh, which they did, it was mentioned, it was uh, actually noticed in our enforcement action, uh, please close out our public hearing. We appreciate the feedback, and we'll continue to be in correspondence as the project moves forward. So it would be my recommendation that we uh, drop without prejudice uh, the Scotland Road project. Yes, um, did he, I mean, you confirmed that all the elements of the enforcement order were in fact? Yeah, as a matter of fact, once before, Jennifer actually posed the question before we even came up here, and just to make sure that my memory was correct. So I pulled out the enforcement order, and the enforcement order references the LEC plan, and the enforcement order uh, references a complete NOI, and that there was no requirement to file uh, any other as long as they were going back with their original plan. If you remember, he decided that all that material that he, the big rock sticks, everything he had pushed down that slope to the, that wetland, uh, he's now agreed to clean that up, not attempt to permit it to leave it in place. So he's gone back to the original plan, which was the enforcement order. Okay, so there's certain items like that that are expected to be done at some point in the later form. Yes. Yes, he's done his plantings out there, so he's got all his wetland plants, his complete pallet of plants is planted in, in the wetland, but that buffer zone is going to have to be uh, mitigated. It's going to have to mitigate that damage in the spring. It's, it's too late now to do it. How's it covered? Uh, it's very spotty. Um, even the grass that's taken has, I mean, you can count them. It's certainly not a chia pet. Uh, you know, I can tell you that. It's, uh, it's pretty sparse. There were some areas out there where they had um, access roads and they had driven on and they didn't really scrape them up, scarify them up at all. So they got a lot of wash from their seed off of those areas. The areas that was disturbed or the areas the seed washed into, there's some growth. Uh, you know, it's late in the year, it's starting to get cold and dark and whether they get sufficient growth or not is going to be tricky. Uh, they've got a lot of check dams, um, they've got a lot of handwork to do and a lot of monitoring to do um, with the way the site's been left. Uh, we have some areas where there's probably uh, a couple hundred feet of ditch that is fairly steep and is already starting to channel. So um, there was some just suggestions made yesterday in the site visit that he will put some uh, check dams in there and do those kind of things. How often is there a site visit that you're attending every week? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is the first time I've been out there in, I can't remember how long, in forever. My actions have not, well, I shouldn't say that. I've been out there when we had the dirt in the road there about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was out there and talked about livening up his um, construction entrance and that. But other than that, I haven't been out there on site and I've been just talking to Neil. 
do hope that you know it's got enough cover that you're going to have fish buttons and problems. Right now, um, I would question that to be honest with you, Dan. That's going to take some monitoring. It's going to be it's going to be a tough site um, to overwinter. But it, it is the owner, uh, the owner's responsibility to make sure that there's no sediment damage. Yes. You have to do a weekly report. Uh, during the winter, they're going to stretch those reports out a little bit, I think. I don't know that they're going to do weekly reports. But yeah, after every so much rain, I think it's a half an inch or an inch of rain. I think it's a half inch, but don't quote me on it. Um, a certain amount of rainfall, they're required to go out there and do a, do a report on it and check their, check their items. Are you all set? Okay, so what, what our action was is to uh, dismiss without prejudice. Uh, the continued amended NOI to make repairs to a resource area. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have a continued RDA, request for determination of applicability to retop an existing drive with asphalt from Karen Cumberland at 35 Northern Boulevard. Hi, Karen. We are. Steps. I don't know if it was I the corner, was but the, we, we I can, think it was that step. We can that agree corner. for now. Um, and I think you were looking at it in this picture underneath. Uh, and I've measured this, and this is um, nine feet from that corner to the edge. Um, if that was what it was existing, and again, I moved in, inherited it, had snowplow people that I inherited. They tore up the ground. I had no markers myself, nor pictures. Um, and so um, the reason I want to point this out, this is the third picture, just from, again, the other angle of looking at the front, is the stairwell coming into our front door. Because this is a two-family house, there's two entrances. There's the left house and the right house. So this is all the right house that we're talking about where this extra is. Then we look at the front of the left house, which um, nobody has a problem with, but I just want to show, um, again, how you get into the property um, on this set of stairs, which also has paving, and then it has that same design of the wide oh, step at the yes. bottom. Okay, sorry. And so what I'm hoping is, um, first, first way of looking at it would be that um, the width of the extra from this corner over was nine feet, and then I measured from, from the top corner where our step is to the sidewalk um, that's at the end of our driveway um, is 28 feet. And so, again, that in front of you. I did a little drawing of the actual footage that we're talking about. And my first thought was, um, because it's already there, and um, just as a, 
um, plea to you guys as a committee um, in the future, if you see something happening and you stop it so that there's a discussion, it costs the homeowner much less if we stop it and deal with it then, because I've paid the bill, and now I've got to try to hire them to come back to cut out whatever we decide, um, because I am willing to cut out, but that's where I want to try to un um, have you understand that I would really like to cut out <laughs> five feet by 28 feet, um, so that I have um, asphalt in front of the entrance to my home which is the right side. So the left side already had an entrance. The right side, by keeping it right at this corner, I'm still carrying out five feet by 28 feet, and I've been given you know, the recommended plants and shrubs and trees and all that um, that I would put in in place of where I cut it out. But that would allow me to have an entrance to my location that isn't walking through, you know, shrubs or trees or, or dirt or grass or whatever. Um, I'll speak for myself. I'm sympathetic to the fact that that stairway looks like it should have uh, the ability to walk right up to it. But this is not a discretionary item to give you some black top on a barrier beach. It's, just, it's something we cannot do. Um, so is there some way that you could carry that edge over there? When you get out here a little bit, instead of coming out straight, can you, this is the end of your stairway. Can you do something like this? So you have an equal square footage, but you've just reconfigured it, so then you can get to your stairway, but you're gonna to have to give out whatever you put here is going to have to come up off this corner somewhere if you can, yeah. if you can find a way to do that. And when I was doing the measurements, because what we're talking about, because I've got it down here, the other four feet by twenty-eight feet, um, it's pretty significant. Meaning, if I'm trying to keep this, even if it's for, you know, three feet of a landing, but and then you curve. Um, we're having to go way over into to get that same square footage. Um, and I just don't think it's practical because then I can't park cars. And with two houses, I've got to be able to park cars that I'm allowed to park. So by going like this, it really, if you do the square footage, if you come out, you're, you're coming over like this. And, and then this is what's left, then I can park maybe three cars for two houses. And right now, I think I'm supposed to have at least two cars per house. Well, yeah, I mean, if it was a new, if a new construction, yes, you're supposed to have two parking spots per, per structure. Because literally the front of my house is just a platform. Can you go with a different material other than black top? Parking? Hey, Karen. Like, yeah? If the front of your place was lined, so you look where that car stops, mm -hmm. and you look at the spaces between these cars. Yeah? You could really push them over a little bit. And the, the reason I'm trying to work with you on this is I, you're kind of, uh, these guys, they all have their own mind. But from my perspective, we're getting kind of backed into the spot where, uh, again, I'll, I'll make the statement, we can't give you that extra blacktop. Okay. Um, so if you want to work with us to reconfigure it, that's that's fine. But we'll do that with you. Right. Other than that is it just has, the square footage has to come up. Okay. So, so the one set of square footage, more than half of it, the five, five by 28, I think is very um, reasonable, doable. It's the strip that um, we've been parking on, but um, it's not in front of our, it's not in front of our house. So if you were to look at, because this picture is different than, for example, this picture, in terms of where is this stairwell, it's right there, this slope, is two and a half feet right there. 
The only other thing I can think of, and I've mentioned it to you on the phone, but I really don't think it's a good idea is to pull out all of this. Because then I get my square foot of Jeezy. Because literally my the, the garbage people, and they, again, you guys are looking at a different one, but it's, there's the one with the potted plants. Yeah, this is all my garbage okay. underneath there. So the garbage guys, I take this out to the curb right here. They've asked me, please leave it here and we'll undo it and we'll take it because every Wednesday morning, tomorrow morning, they pull up um, 11th Street and they back down 10th Street and they're driving on my property to get down 10th Street. So I've said, fine, fine. But I'm <coughs> trying to maintain something that is being destroyed like every single week, and not just by them. It's by the neighbors that try to be considerate of our property, but they're, they're, they're jumping. There's a curb where the sidewalk is right here, and they're actually jumping the curb, and they're driving on all of this property that we've paved over to our line and where the street actually is. And I know this street is narrow, but over time, it's going to start chunking away. I mean, those are divots where somebody's car has actually taken a chunk out of a brand new um, park. And so I don't know what the end result is. You know, I thought we were doing good by, by cleaning it up because there were so many divots from the first time around. Um, and you have some of the first pictures. I think I took pictures of where everything is. Um, yeah, that's actually part of the side of the road, and that's that's what will continue to happen. And I I don't want to fix it again. So you can have that out of here, and that could count. Or I don't know if if there's other blacktop on your property that you want to give up as a square footage, that's fine. We can make that trade. Um, the only caution I would have on that edge is uh, you're going to have to put something in there to hold that sand. Are you going to start to lose the sand underneath the edge of your blacktop, it seems like, and that's going to cause another problem for and you. And I had said maybe put like um, uh, a low wall or something here, and then you said absolutely. That's not. another fight that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, but, but then I was thinking... Then it can actually, because this is truly at this angle, almost three feet higher than the road. And if it was just a abrupt, you know, here, and then people walk down here onto the sidewalk, because it does, um, it's even with the sidewalk at this, it's, it's a slope. Um, then everybody can have use of that because it's like we're almost giving it to the town so that people can drive on there and not so, Doug, you were just saying, you know, the, the black top is an out, so it's a line in the sand. No, yeah, it's like a um, what's the source of it? What's the, is it the runoff? Is it the. Um, you, it, it's, it just about hits every single performance standard for the dune. Um, the ability of the waves to move, remove the sand from the dune, uh, the ability of wind uh, to change the dune form. <coughs> uh, you know. So, in terms of alternative. Uh, materials, you know, could we talk about pavers or could we talk about like can, what's in the... We can talk about going from a square footage of blacktop to the same square footage of pavers. We can talk about going from pavers to gravel or from pavers to crushed stone or shell. We can't go the other way. So you can't take... Um, if she wants to take blacktop up and put pavers down, she can, but that doesn't solve her problem because you don't get any extra square footage, even if there's some type of echo paver or whatever they are, um, DDP's gonna balk at it, and they have already, it's not. So there's um, no triangulating this kind of thing. So I can't swap blacktop for pavers on this issue. You may an equal square footage, so it doesn't gain anything, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to gain a square footage. You're the trying to put it just saying. No, it's she's easy. trying to she's trying to cover more than was previously right. covered right. with an impervious surface. So if she took some of the current what the new blacktop that she added, 
and you're saying you have to take some of that away, let's say in front of the side steps, oh, so let's say if she yeah. took that away, which isn't parking, took that away and put like crushed stone or something like that, that doesn't help at all. Yes, it does. So it does? Yes, it does. So, so, I, take so I can put something. So, so and this is what I, I want to understand, because I want to come up with a solution so that I can Oh, wait a minute, you know something? You're not, you're still, you've got four parking places for a duplex. You comply. You've got, by the wetlands bylaw, you've got your four. Um, so, no, we can't give her any more square footage, even if it's crushed stone. It really, that's needs, what I was asking. Yeah, that's what I was it really needs to be back to the zone. I, mean, yeah, okay. I misspoke on that. So, okay. yeah, that so doesn't. I, got it. I couldn't go along the whole front of the house with crushed stone so that, you know, for a two foot swath. There would be there would be something that still Can drains. you go across the whole front of the house with sand? <clears throat> Can I put up heaver so somebody can step on it before they? We get just in? went through that conversation. So the answer is, <laughs> the answer is no. no. Uh, so but if you can if you can come hand. up two feet, which is the overhang to the front of the car anyway, she's not going to be driving into it. So if right. you can come back and you can give that two foot for the whatever you got there, I think it's 58 feet in total, but you've got to leave the, the, the yeah. stairs there. You're going to go in between your stairs. Um, well, what's this porch measure right here, 16 feet? This porch? So you've got two by 16, yeah, you could gain 32 square feet right there. So I can't have people walk on sand. What about like, what's going on in the side yard and the backyard? Are those in there play? There is nothing. No concrete, no patios. You can't tear up your neighbor's driveway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. This, um, literally, this is the street. That's the literally the sorry, the end of my property, right where the overhang in the backyard is. Okay. The back porch or deck. Okay. What about having that strip of sand, right? Where you leave the street and go into the parking lot, people won't be walking on it. And it's less than ideal. But then you drive on it every single right. time? Yes. Yeah, you couldn't. That wouldn't be working out. It's too soft. It's too live down there. It's too live without some crushed stone. Yeah. You go around and make a mess for the people on the sidewalk also. And a bump hole um, can be in the right of way. Um, generally, they're supposed to be on the property lines, but they, they just do the best they can to get them where they are. Karen, do you need more time with us? Because uh, you know, if we don't mind. I don't mind helping you, and if you want to come back, uh, you know, and use a little office time. But we're not. We shouldn't really be defining this project and working on coming to an end. That's we should already be there. Right. Um, so maybe we should have so this move along and have this conversation. So, so what I understand is we could probably come up with what is the square footage that has to be removed, and then come up with. A plan of where it gets removed that's reasonable to the board and reasonable to the functionality of my Yes, house. so you can take what's left and, and reconfigure it so it works for you. Okay. Um, so, I'm happy to come back to the board again, or is there another way where if I do all this and I submit it, you guys just say, okay, or is it, um, this is the form, meaning if once we come up with, even if I'm sitting down with you and I come up with and draw the next plan, I need to come back here so that everybody sees it in public. No, uh, I think the public understands what's going on here, and it wouldn't be out of our nature to um, approve a project contingent upon us receiving a plan that depicts what we've talked about here, uh, and that is, has that equal square footage shown? Um, the board can give me that discretion, um, or they might say, no, we want to see it. So it's really a, a board issue as to... Um, and, and it's not a um, pervious versus impervious issue. It's a get rid of the blacktop issue to a certain square footage, and what, and where is that going to be? and what is it replaced with? 
Well, that's just it too, because if you go back to the first photo of this house on whatever program, whatever app it was on, yeah, you, f you see a driveway. You see this area over by the stairway where they just decided to park on the dune. They just made a mess of it. And then they had a little dune section. When they sold it, they must have thought to themselves, that surely looks bad. So what we'll do is we'll do some plantings over there and we'll throw some bark mulch over there. And they didn't permit it. So they did you no favor. And what they did is when you bought that, you owned their mistake there also. So you kind of, really, if we get back to where this property should be, we have the driveway cut back to just about the center of those stairs, and the rest of that area to the north was dune and dune grass prior to them driving. And is that my only choice is dune grass, or do I get my choice of all these? You get, no. You, you, traditionally, that's kind of been you know, what we say. You've got to plant dune grass down at Plum Island. It's really been a mistake. Uh, it's not just dune grass on Plum Island. It's really, if you take a look at the way the reservation is, it's dune grass on the front, and you get over the top, you get poison ivy, you get your, your brush, and, and your other materials. So there's, there's a lot of material that you can incorporate into that replanting if you wanted to. All right. Then with, let's see, your Yeah, I You're talking about an area that is uh, six to eight feet wide, and what was that driveway? 28 feet? 28 yeah, 28 feet. Actually, that and the new plantings would actually be mitigation to where they started because what they had was four parking spots and they were parking up on the dune. They turned it into kind of a driveway, so it was yeah. gravel. It was supporting vehicles, so it was probably more than sand at that point. But they had four parking spaces without parking on the dune. It was five when we yeah, well, they, they had four plus the parking on the dune. Right, so they had four yes. on hot time. When she bought it, they ended up, they were back at four because they had already taken and planted in that area they parked on. I think my feeling on this would be that, you know, let's just say you came in tomorrow and you work out math, and can you wait a month, this, a month? But if the disagreement carries over to when we get into the next posting window for the next meeting, then I think it's fair to carry it into the next meeting. But you sort of, you know, if this turns out to be an easy conversation, then it's easy. Turns out to be a more difficult conversation. Than maybe so you want to continue this to the next meeting with the contingency that if she comes in and satisfies us with a plan prior to that, then we've done our job here at the hearing. And because it's, be, yeah, my my take is that you know it's a geometry question. It's not necessarily a weapon protection act. It's not necessarily a material thing. It's a geometry. It's math. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. And so if you can sort out the geometry and it's easy, then it's easy. No, let's keep it that way. And if it turns hard, then... All right, look, we're going to move on with this. How does, how does the board feel about that? 
If I can give it that, that makes sense. But does that mean you guys talk in between the months? No, this means we give him. No, this means we can, they give me the authority to discuss it with you and to come to the conclusion that, yeah, the plan is set, but we've got the same square footage of blacktop, and there's a reasonable planting plan down the end. It's, it's not that, what they're saying is it's really not that complicated. I would, I would say, though, that if there's any question on your part about my presence on the other side there, you know, maybe there's a slope. Yeah, there is a question to me because I'm not sure this is getting off my pay grade. I'm not sure how we uh, either keep a public hearing open and work outside the public hearing, the two of us, and decide we're going to close it, the two of us, which doesn't seem right to me, or we close the, either that or it's close the public hearing and then it's contingent upon the her satisfying footage. the square footage. I, mean, I think there's other variables. Yeah, I agree. So I, I, again, I'm going to go back to you one more time for a consensus. Uh, who wants to uh, close the public hearing tonight and uh, entertain a motion contingent uh, approving the project or denying the project, um, but contingent upon her coming back and satisfying the commission, meaning me? Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So that would give us what? If I for my own idea, that's three and three. That's three and three. Yeah, no, that's not helpful. <laughs> it wasn't helpful at all. So then let's just roll it over. All right, then we're going to do it next meeting. I think, that, uh, I think that given the problems that we're looking at, we can, and we can't decide um, that with your permission, we'll continue this hearing to the November 20th date. Okay. All right. I may not be here, but... Um, but by that time, though, Karen, uh, we should at least have worked out these issues, and if there's a warm body there, <coughs> we, can, we can finish it up. Any yes. Okay. All right. Now, before before we stop tonight, are there any abutters here? Would anyone like to speak on this project? Then this project will be continued to the November twentieth date. All right. Motion to yeah. continue. Motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We have a continued request for determination of applicability for the removal and trimming of selected trees from Craig Mellon at 10 Riverfront. that are in front of this house. One. Originally, yeah. it was to remove two of them. Yes. Uh, we got a report, um, and uh, I had the town uh, tree warden go down there and take a look at them, uh, look at them, and one of them was um, not really diseased and should be saved, and the other <coughs> one is diseased and should come down. So um, here there's maple and oak. There's yeah, there's the two oaks. oaks out front. Yeah. You'll see another one. Oh, okay. Yes. So one's to be removed, oh, and one's to be trimmed, that. and the maple's to be removed. That's what you should have to do. That's the one you would do with the dead one. I don't have any questions for Craig. We've already talked about the stumps, uh, no grubbing of the stumps on that bank, and especially, um, but to 
to remove a tree that's been deemed dangerous not only by his own tree man but our tree surgeon, um, I would say that that's so uh, that's an easy one for me. Yeah, makes sense. So it's kind of and then yeah, it's gonna, we're going to be cut flush and left in the bank. Okay. We're going to put anything back. So to speak, to hold the bank in, or are we just going to let it reseed on its own? We'll let it reseed because I'm sure he doesn't want anything back there because there are going to be solar panels put on the roof. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the thing that actually might be useful might be to find um, something, uh, something intentional sure. so yeah. that you don't get seated in with something tall that does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, an ornamental or something like that. Sure, cool. Okay, good. Are there any butters here? Would anyone like to speak on this project? Any more comments or questions from the board? I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. We're very chatty. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> and you move to approve? Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Craig, does a 10-day appeals period that starts the day after the post that we send this out here. So we're going to send it out to DEP. We'll keep yours here. We'll have a date on it where it clears. And at that point there, you can go have your tree guy come back. Okay. <laughs> it's about two weeks after you. Yeah. No, All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. We have a continued notice of intent for an ecological restoration project for the removal of ditch plug to increase, increase marsh resiliency from Nancy Powell at U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Hi, everyone. Hi, Nancy. How are you? So, Nancy, you certainly have enough paperwork here. That's for, for a couple of projects. <laughs> So do you, do you want to start out with a little bit of history and how we got here and why you're doing this? Sure. Um, so um, there's a lot of small marshes on the refuge, as you know, um, and we had um, in the past tried to address some of the drainage ditches that's been dug, you know, kind of throughout our human history here. Um, and one of the things we did was to, to put bones on them to hold the water back. These last eight years or so, we've been um, paying a lot more attention to the increased water that's coming into the lodge. And I've been noticing that the, where the plugs have been put in, um, there's a lot of water being held there and it's ponding and it's actually killing the lodge grass. Um, and um, we are really concerned about that. So when the, there's kind of a lot of other things happening in the marsh that we're trying to figure out. But for this portion where we put in an uh, infrastructure that we think is harmful to the marsh, we <coughs> want to go out. So uh, three years ago, we got some funding and we did a pilot study where we took two of these plugs out and we monitored it really intensely for about three years. And the data uh, shows that, you know, the area recovers, the water drains, the, the plants are coming back. Uh, we're also monitoring uh, elevation, um, so how fast the marsh is keeping up with sea level rise, which is a really important thing that we, we always want to know. And then what's happening to the chemistry of the water in the marsh as well. And so far, where we take the plugs out, it appears that the marsh is doing a lot better than where the plugs are still in. So I think there's a total of 33 plugs that were put in on the refuge, and this proposal is to take out all those plugs. And the, we, we, we do um, the smallest footprint, so even though the berm originally that was built is quite long, most of them about twice the size of this <coughs> table, we're actually just reconnecting the ditch where it originally run through. So we're actually leaving the berm in place because that's actually high marsh habitat, which is you know, something that's desirable for a lot of our birds. Is there going to be uh, a 
some spoils relative to this project? So where we do remove uh, the sediment, the trash peat that was taken out and put in, um, we're hoping the Northeast Mosquito Control can be our partners to do this project. I'm actually meeting with them next Tuesday. Um, and they have equipment that basically um, will, uh, it's a motor tiller, so it will actually broadcast. Um, I think there's pictures in one of the, um, like one of the documents. Yeah, so it's, it will actually spread like a fine, thin layer of mud <coughs> onto the long surface, and, um, and then the vegetation just grows through that. So when we started this project, um, there was a lot of discussions, because from a regulatory standpoint, it's a lot easier if I take that sediment and just take it off site. But um, we know that in salt marshes, sediment is so important. Um, we want to keep the sediment in the marsh, because that's what's going to keep it healthy. So we wanted to leave the sediment in the marsh. And that's one of the things we monitor at the uh, pilot site is, you know, what happens to the sediment. And usually within a month of the plants cleaning up, the sediment um, is captured and you can't really even see where we put sediment down. DP has a little hot burn with that, usually. That usually, up. and I talked to Heidi extensively about this project, Heidi Davis at DEP, and she actually doesn't, um, uh, she doesn't see what we're doing as dredging because we're taking sediment that we have placed and kind of restoring it to the marsh surface. So um, she doesn't really see it as a dredging project, even though we are moving sediment around. And any conversation about the receiving waters? Um, I, yeah, there's no concern from DEP. Um, the Division of Marine Fisheries just responded yesterday and they actually didn't put any time of year restrictions on our projects because they believe that it's isolated enough from the fish um, that I it shouldn't that. have any yeah. impacts. And Army Corps of Engineers, like I said, gave us a permit last fall. So um, there's no issues as long as you know we keep the seminar on the marsh surface. Yeah. And we have, a, we have a more detailed monitoring plan that we're going to be doing going forward okay. with this project. So. Very good. Very good. Any questions <coughs> or concerns? Uh, th is there anyone that wants to comment on this project? I know there were no abutters, actually. Um, by law, there were no abutters. Um, I'm sure there are, but <laughs> um, does anybody want to comment? I'll go back to the board one more time. If there are no questions or comments from the board, I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Just one little question. Uh, so you said the, the plugs came from on site. Do you know? where those sites are and you know like are there big holes just like you know, one digger by the way? So this project was done in combination with uh, a mosquito control project called Open Water Marsh Management which kind of happens throughout the area and up and down the east coast and one of the thoughts was that they wanted to keep fish on the marsh surface they would so that it would be mosquito larvae so as part of that project they actually created all these pools that was drained when the ditches were dug so the, the, the plugs actually came from those sediment from those excavated pools. So they are all marsh peat that they put on to create this berm. So those pools are still there and those pools will be left on, on site. Yeah. yeah. It's not really relevant for this, it's just curiosity. <laughs> If you guys have uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, we do a lot of tours of this project and a lot of the other marsh work that's going on in the refuge. So if you guys are interested, I'd be happy to yeah, do a tour and, and, yeah, yeah. and yeah. see what it, it's it, I'll take it with yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. A motion to accept. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed?
Is anyone here to represent uh, Robert Chi and Petty? I will recall that at the end of the night. Uh, I am here. Oh. Yes, I'd like it to be in. Would you rather it recall? Okay. Yeah, I have the last item anyway, so put it after my last item. All right, fair enough. That will be recalled at the end of the agenda. We have a request for determination of applicability to partially fill an isolated wetland ditch from Ann Quill at 4 Great Meadow Road. Good evening. Good evening. For the record, uh, my name is Matt Steinel. I'm from Millennium Engineer. I'm here representing Ann uh, in her application before the board. That's uh, okay. I think we got Um, Ann owns the property at uh, 4 Great Meadow Road, and you can see the red line here roughly estimates the property line based on the record plan. Um, we had Mark West from West Environmental go out and do a delineation for us so we can determine whether or not um, the majority of her yard uh, contained any wetlands and, and whether or not she would have an opportunity to do anything with the property in the future. Um, in doing so, what we found is that her property is large enough to support a potential another home uh, out on the uh, orchard side frontage of the property. And the only issue that we had really is with the minor isolated pocket that you see there identified as flags uh, IW1 through IW12. Um, it is a basically a drainage ditch uh, that has a foundation drain coming out from the home next door uh, that goes onto the property. And it used to drain across, you can see the, the blue line that cuts across the neighboring property that used to drain that way out towards the marsh there. And uh, subsequently there was some filling on that adjacent property next door and it now uh, no longer drains across that property, just kind of dumps into that little depression there and then seeps into the ground. And um, What Ann wants to do is to allow that use to continue to happen. So we're gonna leave the ditch there, the, the, the depression, uh, extend the pipe out and just fill the end of the isolated wetland closest house on the corner of uh, Orchard Street and Great Meadow. Uh, again, the purpose here is uh, for her to be able to gain access to that Orchard Street side for maintenance in the, in the, in the short term, uh, but in the long term she eventually wants to put a house up there on the Orchard Street side and needs to pr uh, provide a contiguous upland uh, requirement for the planning board. Uh, we met briefly with uh, both Doug and the town planner and there is nothing really in the regs that, that say that she can or cannot fill to create the ice. The, the, create the contiguous upland, and the thought uh, from Martha was that as long as this commission was open to the idea of filling that in, uh, that she would recommend approval from the, the planning board uh, as a contiguous upland piece. So we are expecting a request from the commission to fill the, the, the end of the uh, first half of uh, the isolated upland. So on the uh, the legend here, kind of small small water, water, so we're marsh, the whole thing, salt marsh, yep. half of those okay. Okay. And then yeah. we're talking about so the blue triangle up there. Yes. And the the drainage that was filled at the front line. Yeah, and I'll say that was that was filled when Byfield put the water. Really not. Okay. It was a functional wetland. It predates the wetlands protection. There have been other issues there since, but what we want to mention here with that is that's been isolated for a while. They, they want to do that so they can so solve We only need to get enough width to exactly. get like, lawn meters they need, across it. We'll probably get one conversation going in. Yeah, they, need, they need, uh, out of their 40,000 square feet of their uh, lot size, they need 30,000, 32,000 square feet of contiguous uplands, no ACEC. That isolated wetland cut that in half so they didn't get the 32,000. So mm -hmm. if they fill that, they, um, you heard him say the planning board would consider that contiguous upland. All right. Well, just to clarify, we're not proposing to fill the whole thing. Uh, the, the, the narrowest portion up closest to that house, what we want to fill is to, uh, enough <coughs> to get the contiguous upland requirement and to allow like a vehicle to go across there for lawn maintenance purposes in the short term so she can maybe maintain it. If she never builds the house, she wants that access anyways. And then if she decides to move forward with a potential building lot here, then she has that contiguous upland requirement met. Right. And then the only thing we're doing right now is deciding whether or not we want to maintain jurisdiction over this. Yes. So that if the filling uh, comes by and say they do a partial fill, we would have a conversation about that in front of us as opposed to saying, you know what, we don't think there's a jurisdiction with us at all, and then they go off and do you know, whatever they're going to do without coming back and doing any more filing. Well, 
Yeah, I guess I, I think I have two <coughs> things here. Um, non-jurisdictional wetland. Right. So we'll, we would well, likely find it's a non-jurisdictional wetland. It seems to qualify as one. Um, it's the second engineer in this year that has come through with a plan that's called so. I've also seen a plan for this property right here that puts a house out here on this knoll, and this is isolated on that plan too. So I have some confidence, and I've been on this site several times. This was the site of an enforcement action with DEP, um, so we're pretty familiar with this out here. Well, I would agree that it's isolated um, and non jurisdictional. What else was your question? Well, so because they've got two boxes checked, but the area depicted is jurisdictional, and whether the work depicted is jurisdictional. Gotcha. Well, so, if we find negative on the first one, then C becomes a moot point. Right. Yeah. And so, what, you know, just to humor, just to sort of um, complete the, the, the box, what would make this a jurisdictional weapon? Uh, size, uh, continue, uh, uh, acre feet of water, uh, underlying peak that uh, is over a water recharge area. Uh, but those oh, kinds of things, yeah, right. those kinds of things make an isolated. Right, you know, and so we can cross off the size, yes. and we can cross off the underlying soil uh, because it's a ditch. Um, but the ditch has been there forever, right? So, you know, the question in my mind would simply be, has that um, man-made feature been there long enough that it's developed enough of a soil profile that say we can check that box? It has uh, I, I can't answer that. Whether right. it's got a soil puff profile, I haven't. You know, and where those, maybe the engineers. I, I can answer to a degree. Yeah. It's been there sufficiently long enough to develop soil profile to be keyed out as a wetland. It is a wetland. Right. The the issue is that it's under 5,000 square feet. Right. And it's isolated. says that because it's under 5,000, they don't take jurisdiction on it. Typically, a commission that such as yours would not take commission to take jurisdiction over it unless it met one of the keys that Doug points out, or unless you had a local bylaw that bylaw. says you take jurisdiction over all right. non isolated. So we check both boxes to cover both bases, knowing full well that if, if you found in the first one, the second was not, not an issue. But if you found that you maintained jurisdiction on the first one, then it would allow you to move forward with the second one as well. Right, which all makes sense. I just want to sort of make sure that you know in the hearing, we or, are we technically hearing anyway. We are. Here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we go through all of these and sort of check the box. It like, doesn't apply. It doesn't apply. It's actually, it's an RDA, so it's a public meeting. Uh, I hate that. Um, anyway, so our list, um, what would be the, so we can see the size of the thing doesn't lie on. We can see it's isolated in a very literal way and it's a man-made function or feature, sorry. So then we're left with um, sort of standing um, biota. Uh, we've got wetland plants, we've got wetland hydrology. So we have a Honestly, that's an isolated wetland, right? But we don't have a jurisdictional space in any bylaw to cover that. So, exactly. where um, uh, I suppose the way to phrase the question is simply is there a reason that this may be jurisdictional? Like, is there is there a coin toss somewhere in any of these? I don't think it's a coin toss here. I think that isolated wetlands relative to the Mass Protection Act have been delineated and defined over time that, I, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty much a science. Uh, you know, we, we even, even the ones that are very long and transitional that are the most difficult ones, usually you come to a you know, pretty definitive line, as okay. to, a consensus is the way that is. So then essentially the purpose of the RDA isn't actually have the piece of paper so that on site when somebody comes up you're like no 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 we checked this we got the box i, I would agree that that's that's cool. pretty much okay. that, yeah essentially we wouldn't want to have any type of construction work begin and then have doug show up and say uh-huh that this is jurisdictional right. there's no reason so. to think that in theory yeah. they could go out there and stop to fill that and if i went out there to stop them the burden would be on me to show that it's a jurisdictional weapon yeah, but you would have a good reason to make a fuss because you'd see wetland hydrology, wetland soil, and wetland plants. Okay. So then. Um, but then I can't make them. Uh, then I can't make them meet the criteria of the act, though. So again, we're, right, we're just talking of, circularity now. Yeah. Well, yeah, then it'd be a lot of fluff and fuzz. And, yeah. Um, okay. So I think I'm. Uh, I'm all right in that Sorry, point. Right? Yeah.
Emma. Uh, so then the next question gets into, you know, what have you got out there? You know, in terms of the, uh, is there anything that, uh, uh, you know, like the rare orchid that just so happened to be out there? I mean, have you guys done any looking around to see if anything unusual popped up? Um, I don't think we've looked at some specific species as to, you know, what's rare, what's not. We looked at it as, a, is it a wetland? Are there, high, uh, are there wetland plants there? Do the soils have the hydrology? Is there standing water? Uh, and what we found here is that it, it adheres to drainage. If there, there is no um, a hydrologic connection from one larger wetland to another. It's just a drainage ditch that's not functioning as it was originally built. Um, and it just holds water for a very short period of time when it does have water coming in from that um, foundation drain and drains right out and dries right out. And, and you did say it was just the the narrowest tip of it that they're filling in, right. not the whole thing. So minimize the work, right? right. Yeah, just yeah. so you meet the, the lines. Yeah. Um, well, that in cost. I mean, Anne's, Anne's doing this, you know, to keep the cost down as well. She's not looking to spend a lot of money to fill the whole thing in, just enough to get that contiguous upper requirement and allow her access to the. What is the planning to require for um, a ribbon of connection? They didn't give us a specific amount, so you know we're, we're going with you know again the idea being that if she doesn't make it a buildable lot, if she chooses not to go that route, that she has the ability to get equipment across it. So we're looking at something in the, the width of about 10 to 15 feet to get a vehicle across there. Okay. Um, is there any reason to think there might be a rare or something or other stuck in that no the barely weapon? Put it this way: the area is not identified as such. Um, so well, and, and given a broader that, neighbor, but anything that might. Any, like, not that I'm aware of. All right, so not even coin toss type stuff. Not even like, oh, you know, maybe there's a chance. It's, it's not really. Not that I'm aware of. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah just to and we spent a considerable again. We spent a considerable time out there with DEP relative to enforcement action. So you've seen plenty of it. Yes. Yeah. It looked all the same as everything yes, else. Yes, it does. It looks the same as the stuff on the uh, you know down in here. And, and and although it's not a definitive answer, this helps to kind of ease the, the concern. Um, Mark West has um, been doing this for 30 years, uh, you know, and, and if he found something out there that jumped out at him, he'd be the first to call me up and let me know, and there was no... He'd be all excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> he would. So again, like I said, I just want to sort of check all the boxes and make sure, but it, it doesn't seem to be any reason to not, you know, just, yeah. Uh, everybody satisfied? It, was that ditch dug for foundation drain? Yeah, that, that's the only reason it's if there. You plot, if you fill it in, will the foundation still drain? It will. The intent here is in the process of filling is to extend the pipe. Okay. So they'll extend the pipe out to where we're going to limit our filling to, and then the pipe can continue to function in that remaining yes, portion of it. Okay. That's what's angry with the neighbor. Yeah. There's, there's nothing on record easement-wise allowing them to do this, but at the same time, it's no sense in angering a neighbor. It's been that way for a while, and it doesn't yep. affect Anne's ability to do what she wants to do. So. Any abutters here? Would anyone like to speak? I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Motion to accept. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. You're welcome. We have a request for determination of applicability to construct a bond in the buffer zone for Matt Poulin at 184 Middle Road. Hey. Hello, how are you?
you know, 184 Middle Road, which is the site, some of you may remember that this house was the site of a um, notice of intent and an order of conditions that we wrote. Uh, there were a lot of pines out back, um, and we allowed a lot of that to get cut. There was kind of a monoculture of pines back there that someone put in. Um, and so we allowed those to be cut down. And it's a construction of a big house that's going on there. Um, the barn, well, there was no real site for the barn at the um, outset. So uh, when he found the spot for that barn, it happened to be in the buffer zone. So we informed him he would have to come in uh, before the board. Any questions for Mrs. Brown? <clears throat> is there any major slope to the meadow that this is pretty flat? No, it's pretty flat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is this the septic system for the house also? Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's the okay. okay, so both of them are feeding into that. Yes. Bathroom in the barn. Um, no bathroom. How come there's a tank that leads from it? Yeah. So it looks like there's a line that comes out of your barn yeah. and goes to the tank, okay. and then there's a line from the tank to here. This is the line that we're well, we're not looking at the septic system. I was just wondering what the, what the use of the bond was. That'll be up to the building inspector and board health. So. Yeah, <laughs> that could be. That could be. If it's only a, a half bath, that would be enough. I just drew erosion control around the barn between okay. the wetland okay. and your project. Okay. I put erosion control and dated it. Would you just initial that, please? Well, you just you don't come back far enough, Jenny. Yeah. You're just going to try to find all the details. Yeah. You know, They're so tiny. I know. Do you have questions for the answers where things are going? <laughs> Any other questions for Mrs. Fuller? Um, Have you worked it out? I think so. Did I already see the septic connecting to the barn? Yes. It looks it. Uh, there's a there's a line from the barn to a tank and right. from the tank it, to the right. so it looks it. But okay. um, um, do we know anything about the septic in terms of Uh, that's an existing uh, septic system that was there. There was a there was a large home here prior to them purchasing the property. Yep. So septic was in. So it's, it's really so it's really going to be up to others for the use of the barn. That's really not our jurisdiction. Whether they're going to put a bathroom in it or not, it's going to be up to building inspector for help. Then it's just um, just 
barn. That's the only new part? That's it. The rest of it's all been approved. Mm -hmm. What was the um, footprint before the barn? I didn't grab the yard. Yeah. yeah, there was nothing up with the barn, because I don't believe. Right. Any other questions or concerns for the applicant? Are there any others <coughs> here? Would anyone like to speak on this project? I'll close the public hearing and obtain a motion. With a negative termination subject to erosion control being placed as permanent plan. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You might have heard me say already that there's a 10 day appeals period that starts the day after the post stock and the envelope that we send it out in. So it's going to take us a week or so to get it out of the door, and it's about three weeks um, you can sign off on the permit that you want for that. Okay. Do you uh, no well the erosion control I'm sure that there's been some placed around your property already for this construction. So the same thing that you've done over here, I don't it doesn't matter whether it's silt sock, marathi barrier, hay bales, whatever you've used, as long as you're controlling your silt, that's acceptable. All right? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. have a notice of intent to construct a duplex and install a septic system from Kathleen and Alex Shuck at 16 Forest Street. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Thanks for having me tonight. My name is Scott Cameron with the Morning Cameron Group. I'm here on behalf of Kathleen and Alex Shuck uh, for uh, Lot 2 at 16 Forest Street. Um, if I could uh, entertain uh, real quick, I have a minor drafting uh, amendment I want to distribute to you. I'll, I'll explain what that is. It's okay. just a a line that was drawn, uh, I noticed this evening a little off. Uh, so it's the same plan, I'll just show you what line was adjusted. Okay. Do you want to do that? I do. So this lot was recently divided uh, from 16 4th Street. Uh, we're identifying it as lot two. <laughs> Uh, the existing home is situated just off the locus here. I'll speak on this side. <clears throat> so originally had frontage across, they cut off this lot here, the existing house is here. Kathy and I just renovated and sold this house here. And what they're proposing to build on this lot is a, a two-family home uh, with the frontage on 4th Street. Uh, the wetlands were delineated in April of this year by Mike Seacamp. They are located in this portion of the property. They extend back. There's a small break where there's a path that goes out back, and then there's more upright out back. In total, the property is 88,000 square feet. There's about 55,000 square feet of upland, and the limit of work here encompasses about 12,000 square feet, or under 15% of the total property. There's nothing proposed for the rest of the real estate. So it's a very compact footprint. There's a septic system. We did slow testing in the back here. Septic system plans are currently interviewed by the Board of Health. There's uh, loamy sand, percolates between two to four minutes per inch. Good sandy soil here. Uh, what we have illustrated in the plan is a mulch sock that would follow the limit of work. Uh, this area, you can see in the plan, this clotted line is the tree line. So there's uh, some trees and brush on the frontage, and then trees will go back here. But most of this is open. So there's very little clearing, mainly along the frontage here to get the access for the driveways in and the utilities in. But most of this, won't entail uh, much work other than earthwork. And the dwellings we situated here, um, and we've identified a <coughs> location for a stockpile here for excavation of the foundation, keeping it away from the wetland, mm -hmm. and a stockpile here for the septic system uh, as they excavate that out, and then that would either uh, loan would most likely be spread and any excess would be hauled off. Uh, the erosion control we selected was a mulch sock uh, because it is relatively flat uh, in this area, and what we did. Uh, as the limit of work comes across here, we proposed a row of uh, wetland plantings here, uh, selection from the wetland uh, plants, um, 
just to kind of demarcate, because it is open, just a limit so that uh, a future homeowner doesn't push towards the wetland over time. So we space these eight feet out center and just put a line here uh, of uh, bushes. Uh, the adjustment I made in the plan I just handed you, the, uh, we put on here a 25 foot setback line and a 50 foot setback just so you can gauge the limit of work with respect to the wetland and then the 100 foot buffer zone. The 50 foot setback was, was drawn incorrectly so what I gave you was just the adjusted 50 foot that's correctly drawn. Uh, I just want to make sure you have that and it's correct for the record. Um, there's a detail of the house here with dimensions on it. Uh, it's relatively straightforward um, <coughs> scope work for the project. It's, it's a mix. It goes back and then there's uh, an intermittent stream way in the back and there's a portion of upland here and then this, this, this one kind of comes back and there's a break. So you actually come back and it's, it's, it's like a path that goes through and then there's one on the other side. Um, I did not uh, bring the A&R plan with me. But, uh, I might have it. Um, but yeah, the rest of the property is there's nothing proposed in that area. And if anything works, all buffer zones are strict. I didn't see much of the question on this, really. The only thing I saw was, uh, I questioned some of your grade lines. I was just trying to make sense of them. And it's more relative to uh, your proper foundation. Mm -hmm. Your proper foundation at 68.7. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you grade a 68 line right up to that foundation, pretty much. Um, I think, what do you think you so you're going to be an inch below that with your overhang for your shingles and stuff, and then you have to drop out there by building code. Is it eight, 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 eight inches and ten feet. Yeah. So it's, it's about so an eight inch reveal. Well, you're going to be close. Yeah. It's super close there. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess that was about the only thing I found on that. I just had to draw these lines up for myself to mm -hmm. to verify that. I couldn't quite figure out what this was. going to be, uh, you can see the 68 contour, it's probably going to be closer to 67 and a half, 67, I'd imagine. And then if they if they do come up and level a little bit just for access, it's going to be lower than that. So yeah. it should be fine on that side. Well, I've got some thoughts, but I'll wait to the end because I had my rant last time. <laughs> Go ahead and rant. I'm worried about other people's time to rant. Uh, are there any other are there any questions from any other board members for the applicant at this time? Um, what, on this slope here that you're regrading, mm -hmm. um, what, what's going on? Loman seed. Grass? Yeah, Loman seed. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it, whatever they, they said to do, but Loman seed. And is uh, this limit of work line, erosion control line, is that how much? I don't see any grade, you know, any grade lines going down towards that. I mean, yeah, you're, you're it, it pretty would, much down there at that point. Yeah, it would just it would feather right down. So you can see the last contour line here and then here. So the next next grade you hit is the existing grade. So this is just feathering down the slope. So you get a 66 and a 64. So we try to offset the line enough that you have space to get that graded down. I think really what I'm saying is from the limit of work to the wetland, mm -hmm. is there much is that about is that like flat? <laughs> It slopes gradually. I, I know we didn't get a lot of contours and wetlands, but it's, it's just kind of a rolling, just kind of continues to roll off. There's not much going on there. Since there's no grading down there, how would you feel about moving <coughs> that detail line onto the 25 yeah. foot setback? Well, my concern is, be... well, access to get back here, if they do need to get back to do maintenance on the septic system, they wouldn't be able to get a, a mini excavator or a machine back here or a truck. They'll still have 25 so. feet. Right, it's 50 foot. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, looking, bring it, I'm yeah. not looking at the revised plan. Yeah, it would be about yeah. 12 feet. Correct? No, yeah. no, you're right. Yeah, it would be, right. be really yeah. narrow. I, I was looking at this, the old plan. Well, on that point, is there a way to just yeah. sort of shift, you know, the whole corner, like just bump the thing a little bit in that direction? 
again, it's it's pretty tight. You can see I put the dash line on here, so you have your zoning envelope here. Um, and we didn't want to skew it to the street because then it makes getting out of the driveway awkward. You're gonna have people driving across the lawn because everybody mm -hmm. depends perpendicular to the road. Yeah, you're gonna gain. Yeah, you might be able to gain five feet. I thought that was a weather pipe. <laughs> Uh, rather, rather have it and be comfortable instead of people pushing on it. We felt that would be a good width for you know homeowners to have, have enough room. Makes some sense. Makes some sense. At least with the bushes down there, with the plantings down there, it's helpful. Yeah, marks it out. So what's going on with the the crushed driveway rolling over into the concrete driveway? That is temporary. That is for construction. This okay. was a was a pad before the trucks drive out because there will be trucks coming in the sand for the septic system, gravel, etc. Okay. Um, structural fill. So we want to make sure they have tracking there. Right. So that will, that, when that work is done, it would be paved. Can I just keep going? Well, I just is see everybody it. else ready? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so uh, th there's a couple of plan details that just like nice job on the um, you know putting the border in ahead of time and taking the new one. New one well, that was a nice touch. Um, but the thing is that I've gotten my um, you know being that we are totally within the buffer zone and with this close to the wetland, there is a way to change out from the impervious to a pervious driveway. Um, you know, the details are, you know, sort of whatever aesthetically would work, but to change that out to make that a little softer and impact. Yeah. Um, my experience with single family homes and two family homes is it's gonna look great on paper. They're gonna spend the money and build it, and then five years from now, it's not going to work anymore. It's just going to be a plugged up, impervious driveway. Um, I would, I would maybe offer an alternative, and I can. Uh, I would say we don't have a final number, so we're, we're going to be continuing tonight until we get that from DEP. Um, but what I could offer is maybe another alternative to capture maybe some roof runoff and maybe get that redirected into the ground. We will have the benefit of the water supply, the public water supply going to the leaching field, so you have a, a source of kind of artificial reintroduction of water into the, into the ground. Um, but instead of doing an impervious driveway, which again, I don't think it's it's going to succeed long term, um, I would offer to maybe do something else. I can come back. All right, well, yeah, see what, you know, see what your you know, the team says about one thing or another, and you know, that'd be an interesting yeah, check the soil. Where are your soils out here? There's yeah. any low. The water tables, we didn't test up in this area, uh, but the water tables were relatively low back here. We had to, you can see, we did have to fill the system a little bit, but it wasn't, you know, it's not like the water tables. You see soils? A. A soil. A soil. Oh, okay. So we right. could potentially well, do something. All right, good. I think it'd be reasonable and it would be much more effective than an than impervious driveway. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. You know, we'll be, see what comes out and that'll be, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. um, and then, again, sort of speaking to your five year point, um, you know, I've seen plenty of situations where people put up like a nice tree line, right? And they sort of um, living fence, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the property changes hands. They're like, oh, these trees don't like them. They come down, they make a new lawn. Nobody catches on. Right? Uh, and one tool that we've, I've been involved with in the past, not in this town, but elsewhere, uh, has been you know, some kind of legal, um, like a conservation restrictive thing or something similar. And then you could use that as an excuse to put up signs that say, like, this is the hard line. You know, please don't cross this line. And then if there is a crossing over, it's one more reason not to do it, if you will. That kind of just to sort yep. of hold the line, so to speak, and to see if there's something on your side that you know, would be amenable to that kind of thing. I would, I would be there. absolutely against any title encumbrances because that would be a problem long term just in financing. It's, it's, not, it's not something that I've ever done on something this small. Right, but it I is would, a little would, smallish. Yeah. It, it's very small. Um, but I would suggest, uh, or possibly offer, you know, putting in some markers in here. Um, you can put those on like a cedar post with a sign on it, and we can we can put those with some of the bushes in here and kind of mark out that edge. Yeah. Well, Plus I mean, you understand kind of the concern, obviously. Yeah. Um, and so it's just something to help maintain that space mm -hmm. from becoming just somebody's um, assumption of, uh, you know, it's fine, we'll just keep going, and then it just grows out, and all of a sudden it becomes a problem. You know, I'd rather sort of Commission carry any uh, placards? We do not. Kind of we do not. We do not usually require them. Okay. But that's uh, not, not meaning that we wouldn't in the future. Or okay. 
Well, they put some time for that as well uh, for yeah. the next meeting. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the, um, the the technique, the tool is kind of irrelevant. It's just hopefully to hold the line, so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, the one benefit here is a two-family, and these would be condoized. Is you do you'd have to have both owners in agreement. So part of the you know part of the kind of documents would would mark this out. They'd have the operating from the septic system, maintenance of driveways, etc. So you would have to have both parties in yeah. concert. So you kind of have one watching the other. Maybe that's how you get it into perpetuity. Maybe, yeah, if maybe. you agree to put it into the documents, the condo documents, then like a special that, call out kind exactly, of thing. then that kind of puts it in perpetuity without putting a lien on the case. Yeah, I'd have to check, again, it gets into a time, I've run into this before, and it gets into an issue with financing, and we'll see weird things like that, because there's no, that's not, a, that's not law, that's not, right. you know, so we're kind of artificially putting something on that could be challenged, and it's hard to hold up. But I'll, 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 I'll see if I can come up with some ideas to make you feel comfortable with the long term. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Did Brian's questions uh, prompt any others from the board? Are there any abutters here? I just have a question. Um, as oh, would you far as one second, would you identify yourself first? Oh, I'm sorry. Melissa Stanton. Um, I just recently bought 16 floors. Okay. Um, the only issue I had is with location of septic, and everything has to be so many feet, yet we don't have a clean title yet for 15 feet of our frontage. So I'm worried, what if that 15 feet, like, does the town require 125? Like, say, we don't get that 15 feet cleared, then what happens to the septic and where the septic is if we should have to refigure the plot, the land? What, how did you get an a and plan with uh, this issue up in the air? Do you, do you know anything about it? No, I don't, but um, I, so far as I guess that's more of a zoning building <coughs> inspection matter, I think. I would I'll, agree I'll look into it. And this board has no ability to give out property rights. Um, so if something were to change that would change <laughs> these setbacks and would affect the installation, they would just, if, if they close the hearing out, they would just have to come back before us with those amendments, with those changes. I just know it's still open, so I'm worried, you know, for, for my sake, what would happen if I can't get that 15 feet left of my driveway, then what happens? Do you know what I mean? So the With all due respect, uh, you know, I, I'm sympathetic to it, but it's not a conservation issue, so it's not something that we could bring remedy to. And it doesn't matter what project we approve here, yeah. if they don't have the property rights to perform that project, they can't do it. They have to come back here with an amendment. I was just more worried of this, where the septic is in, in alignment with us, should that change? Maybe with a little luck over the next month, this will remedy itself. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm hearing that we're going, heading towards a continuance anyways this month, so um, it may be, maybe your, uh, your fears will be taken care of by next Great. month. Okay. Would anyone else like to speak? I'm at 18 Forest Street, and <clears throat> I have woods that goes all the way back further than either one of them. And it is, the ground is marshy and wetland around. A lot of the trees all spring, and depending how hot the summer gets. Uh, <coughs> and every spring, I've been there since 71, to the <coughs> The right of the septic system, the heavy dark, dark dotted line, this spring before, I don't know who, who did it, but I was away for part of the winter when I came back. Uh, there's always been a, a running trench river on the side. There's a, the next person to the right there's a stone wall, and in between the stone wall and that black dog line, there had been a trench like four, five, six feet wide of deep water all spring. I mean, if the old time of Mr. Rogers could have, if it would have been the smarter thing for him to cover it up, he would have, and he never did all those years. But all of a sudden, it's all covered up now, higher than the grade. So 
where did all that water go? Was that allowed to do? I'm, I'm not sure I follow you. So we're talking, as we look at this picture, we're talking about the right-hand side of the picture. Right and inside of that dotted line. Inside of there. No, from there to the stone wall of the, the Okay, lower from there bottom. over. Well, that's the wetland resource area. Are and you that, saying that you're And that septic system isn't gonna be, with that wetland or that septic system, they're not gonna interfere with each other. That septic system is gonna be a proof of being so close to that trench, that big brook that was covered up. We have, this septic system is outside the 50 foot buffer. So this commission here has jurisdiction over that septic system only for the temporary impacts of construction. If it was within 50 feet, then this commission gets to look at how it operates and how it functions as well as the temporary impacts for installing it. Um, it's greater than 50 feet, so we don't have that. And having said all that, this board almost always defers to the Board of Health. They know a lot more about the operation of septic systems than we do. So even when it's within the 50 feet, we generally stick to the, um, the impacts from installation and don't get into the working of the system. What this gentleman is planning on building and installing, it's not going to where I could hardly hear, but this it's going to be running downhill to the back. It has a, a, a grade now. That septic system is going to be on the top lot grade. As it goes down, the second acre down, it goes downhill. Is any of this going to have any runoff going down into her woods? No, what they have to do when they do a septic system is they have to go down to the naturally occurring material that is a perkable material, something that you can build a septic system on. From there, depending, he's got A soils, so uh, my guess is that he had to define this, uh, that he had to design the system with the bottom of it five feet above that table because it perks so well. If, you per if it perks less than that, you can, your separation could be four feet, and with innovative systems, you can go down to two feet with the board held, if you go with a press or something like that. These systems are put in level so that they level spread. They shouldn't tip to one side or the other. They shouldn't overload one end or the other if they're properly installed. I know that they're inspected on each level. Uh, the base is prepared, the sand is brought in, the stone is brought in, the pipes are laid, and each one of those steps is inspected by the Board of Health. Is this septic system going to be at the level of the duplex's backyard or like some houses in Byfield have, who have to put in a new septic system due to selling or whatever, they bring it up and then cover it up and it looks like a mountain. Is it going to look like a mountain? This one looks slightly raised. Uh, you know, it, it's, it comes, if you'd like to come up, um, I can, I just I can show you. how many feet above the grave? Uh, well, what's above it's existing? Two feet? Two feet above existing grade, you got an existing grade line coming right into the middle of. Uh, actually, it's almost a down. It's almost right on grade, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost grade. Because mm -hmm. we've got an existing line of seventy right over the top of it that doesn't change after before and after installation. So you're not going to you're not going to see it like it's not going to be a four foot raised mound. No. All right. But even if it was. Um, that wouldn't be something we'd have jurisdiction over, <coughs> uh, and, and that's set by state law. The height of that system is state law. Mm -hmm. It's not. You can wait again. It can be waived with a different system, but um, that's uh, that's that's cut in law. Sure. Uh, a couple questions. Um, is there a reserve area? Uh, not shown in this plan, but there is a reserve area. Um, and, uh, and and the second part of the question is. We're not approving the septic plan at this point, or are we? Yes, we are. We're approving the installation of the septic system, but we're not approving the septic plan because it's outside the 50 foot. So we don't have authority to yeah, approve yeah. the plan. So this is the plan that's under review by the Board of Health. So the way this one works is it's a trench system, and the reserve area is in between each trench. So you have a trench reserve, trench reserve, so it alternates back and forth. Yeah. in between trenches. <clears throat> so, am I looking at the height? It's 70 and this goes all the way around? Yeah, 
so you have a 70, 72 down to 70, so and then 70 all the way out to that dock. Yep, yeah. and then 70 out to here, right. and then and then it'll slip right and then right off to, to whatever this is. Yep. Yeah, you get 66 and then you just 64, yeah. so it kind of just continues to slope. So it'll look more level here when it's done, mm -hmm. rather than sloping down. Does the board have any other concerns for the applicant that they would like to address for <coughs> next month? Would anyone else like to speak on this project? Go ahead. Sorry, one detail I'm just missing. Um, is this a, um, a biodegradable silt sock you guys yes. Oh, nice. And the point four of the compost is going to be distributed on site. So they're just going to rip them. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's cool. Cool. They get real heavy when they're wet. Yeah, they do. Not much fun to remove. Unless you have any other questions, I guess we're all set. Uh, we will continue this hearing with your permission to the November 20th date, is it? Yes, November 20th. Uh, I'll put that to a motion. Um, I, 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 I will entertain a motion to um, continue this hearing to the November 20th date. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. have a notice of intent to improve the right-of-way and to construct an emergency access driveway from the town of Newbury at 14th Street. Um, I was contacted by the engineer today and the engineer uh, asked to continue this hearing um, till November 20th. Um, I know a lot of you are here to speak about this hearing so if you would like to speak tonight we will certainly hear you because you've been sitting here long enough um, but you're not likely with our engineer not here and our final plan not really in place. Um, uh, you're not likely to get a lot of answers back from us, but we'll certainly listen to your concerns. And it may be timely because if they're going to come back next month, it'll save a month. Um, so if you have something to say and you feel comfortable, please raise your hand. Nothing? Okay, so everybody's happy, huh? <laughs> uh, sure. Can you tell us something about it? I don't know much about it. Uh, we started out maybe five or six years ago, and uh, it was longer ago than that, actually. It was 2008, 2009. It was 10 years ago when we almost, when Bazaar's house went in and we almost lost Plum Island Center. It became really apparent to us that we needed some other way around the center. Fourth Street comes down, they come down in dog leg, a 10 foot dog leg, and you can't get anything around the corner. You couldn't get emergency vehicles down there. So we had a problem. Um, we looked at a couple different ways. We were going to have one on and one off. We looked at developing Hutchins through and then having another alternative coming out this way. We've had discussions with DEP over the years. We've now pared this down to the minimum. Uh, we've got about a 4,800 square foot impact. So we're under the 5,000 square feet. And this was about the, the smallest, the, the least we could do and still connect those two sections of the island. Uh, the North End and Old Point Road um, by these means. Uh, there will be uh, no frontage developed uh, relative to this road. There will be no access. There will be bollards in place. It will be walking access. We won't stop people from walking through there, but it will not be a passageway for cars. There will be no <coughs> driving through there uh, unless there's an emergency. So it will go right out to Old Point Road? Yes. But, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we know it's not a, you know, it's not an end all because if the whole island's flooded, if the issue is flooding, you're not getting off Old Point Road either. You're not getting up the turnpike. If the issue is we're under attack by wave energy and we're losing the center um, and we're in trouble down there and we shut the center down for safety reasons again, it'll be very usable at that point. I 
have a question. Yes, so you're George. coming down 14th Street, and then you're connecting to 12th Street. Is that no, oh, we're yes. coming down 14th Street and then connecting to 22, the access to 22, 20 and 22 are Old Point Road, okay. which is, yeah, sort of, 12th Street comes Street. across there somewhere, but we kind of just go cross country across land owned by the town of Newbury. That, right. that whole parcel back so there is town of land. like an L? Uh, no, it's, it's going to. connects to the, the dirt road? I'm looking for a bigger scale. There's one here, but I'm looking for a... That's why I'm looking for the big scale, John. I saw the didn't have your glasses on And so this is, this is 14th Street. Sure. So 14th, yeah. 16th T, yeah. 22R comes from here and kind of goes, this 12th Street, as you can see, right. comes cross country yeah. and goes up and gains access to these structures. Our roadway is going to hook around here and come back into it right here. There'd be a gate or ball that's here. There would be a gate or ball that's here. We have some issues. We only have a 10 foot right away. We have to grade right. it. Right. So we've got construction easements that we're going to be asking for and things so, like that. So but what is the number that this street is going to come out at on 14th Street? I mean, there's a house here, right? Uh, there's a it's house right. out here, right. uh, but there's no. OK. So no, that's, that's a right of way. That's a 10 foot right away. So okay. that's not even a straight. That's not even old point road. No, it's not old point. OK. All right. OK. OK. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Any, any other questions or comments? Uh, then I will continue this public hearing to the November 20th date um, with the board's permission. I will entertain a motion, I guess, to continue this hearing to the November 20th date. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? A notice of intent to demolish the existing single family home and construct a new single family home on piles from Mark Petros at 8 12th Street. Oh. Long time to say. Yeah. structure that is for the most part in the same footprint of the existing structure here. It just pulls the back into the building in and then extends it out on this side over here to make up the difference in, in floor space um, and, and to make it a functional layout on the inside of the structure. Uh, the intent here is to then uh, install a gravel area underneath the structure for parking so they can come in and park under the structure here. Um, they have an existing gravel uh, driveway that runs along the side here. They're going to actually restore a portion of that. They want to maintain a couple additional overflow parking spots for guests when they come so they're not proposing to restore the whole thing. 
um, but they are proposing to restore a portion of this to its natural state. Um, we have existing water and sewer out on, on the road. We'll be connecting into those services as well. Um, and it, it's pretty straightforward, uh, you know, remove the existing structure, build a new one up on piles uh, so it complies and, and minimize impacts to the, the Barry Beach, which is the only resource out here is the Bethesda on a Barry Beach, so it's coastal to and it's in the Fema flood over. Can I take that back from you for a minute? So I've got my notes here. Yeah, um, so you've covered the ZBA decision. You've already talked to Sam about that. Um, how about some elevations on this, Matt, so we can see what this looks like from underneath here and where you're close, where your touchdowns are. Um, do you have any storage under there? Uh, as far as architectural uh, elevations, um, they should be in that in plans that I just gave you. Okay. But, uh, I have the elevations of the lowest structural member here and, and finished first floor is approximately 15 inches above that. Um, the only thing under the structure right now proposed is we're going to have no piles running down the center here so they can get the vehicles in. And then we have a uh, utility chasing point here for bringing up the water and the sewer up to the structure that's now going to be elevated. Um, there's an existing concrete walkway that you see here as mm -hmm. part of the existing conditions. The intention here is to remove concrete from the beach, so we want to remove that as well, um, as well as restoring, like I said, a portion of that. So we saw that, that as the, um, the mitigating factors that uh, of restoration for the project for what's being proposed. All right, tell me about your outdoor shower. Uh, outdoor Please. shower is uh, was originally intended to be located on the deck. They wanted a larger deck here uh, to, min to get us within the zoning set, uh, requirements for area coverage and lot coverage. We had to reduce the size of that deck, so the intention would be underneath the structure here uh, to have a, a shower head that's uh, going to be um, there so they can wash up their feet and things like that before they walk up the stairs into the house. All right, so the shower head will be waist high? I believe the intent is again waist height. I don't know that for sure. And the owner is here. I can confirm that. Yeah. No, you can. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Waist height. Yeah. It gets much. It gets complicated if you have it regular shower. No, no, no. We're going to make it complicated if you. Have it. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. And as long as it's to wash your feet off and it's yeah, that's, that's that's great. If, yeah. you, if you want to sit down and be here after yeah. that, nothing uh -huh. we can do about it. <laughs> All right. Um, it's a, you're going to remove these two portions, correct? And then it says to repair the existing wall. If you look at it in the pictures, you're not going to push that wall back together. It isn't just like this; it's like this. Um, so how are you going to repair that existing wall? Okay, so I, uh, perhaps I missed that. When I was out inside, I noticed that the wall had some cracks in it. Um, yeah, they're, they're quite separated, now. This side of the wall is not too bad. When you're going to come down with your stairway, it's not too bad. But this back section is. It's pretty gone. Right there, that is broken and it's it's separated this way. You know what I mean? It's not just like a crack in a foundation. Okay. All right. No, I've, I'm, it's even hard to see in this photo here. Yeah. Um, I, I believe when I saw it, and again, I could be incorrect, but um, I believe it cracked. And I don't think it, it separated so much horizontally. I thought I think it settled a little. So it, it, it looks like the crack on the bottom is wider than at the top. So I think it's actually settled a little. So the intention here is not so much to repair the wall to make it uh, any more structurally sound. It is a secure wall. It's not falling over. I think the intent is for the, the aesthetic look of it. So they, they uh, are likely to do like, uh, facing on it to, to make okay. it look So nice. maybe that should be spelled out so that we know that repair of the wall has some definition. Sure. Okay. In this case here, we're in the same boat as the last uh, applicant. We don't have a DP phone number. We will have to come back at the next hearing so we can um, clarify that. Um, I, I do want to make something clear. I've heard that a couple times tonight. And I, I, relative to a DEP number, we are not supposed to uh, hold a hearing uh, for lack of a DEP number or lack of DEP comments. The thing that we can't do with a DEP number, I know a lot of commissions won't. They'll hold and they'll say, we have to wait for DEP comments. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Um, what we can do is we can't write an order of conditions without the, without the number. Um, but we can close a public hearing. Generally, I don't like to, and I leave it up to the applicant, because if they do hear something back from DEP, they have the ability to move around a little bit, and you know, they don't have to reopen their hearing. Um, but I just, you know, just to let it out there, if the applicant wanted, we can close without a number. That's good to know. I, to be honest with you, I think I knew that in the past, because I've dealt with some commissions who have done exactly that. I don't recall that there was a, we had to give the EPA a certain amount of time before we could do that. Like maybe in 14 or 21 days, we 
No, you have to give uh, natural heritage has to have 30 days, uh, but there's no there's no time limit on DEP relative to them getting. I mean, sometimes their comments come out in three days, and sometimes their comments come out in a month. Yeah. Um, you know, they're all over the place. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, define wall repair. Uh, below elevation 15, what are your treatments going to be below elevation 15? So our FEMA flood elevation here is. I do play here, Should we note 13? Here, elevation 13. Yep. It is uh, not a velocity zone. It's not an AO, uh, AO zone. It's an AE, so we're permitted to do anything within uh, one foot above that elevation. Um, so we set the elevation criteria at 14 initially, and then we looked at the height underneath the structure for parking under it, and it, we decided that it was better to bring it up an additional foot for uh, um, hatchbacks and things like that on the back of the car. If you need to open the trunk, you wouldn't want the, the, to be implicating the structure itself. So. We're actually up higher than it needs to be, but we uh, understand uh, that some towns, uh, not all towns, some towns do identify things such as lattice work on, on the underside as to be part of the structure, and they don't want that below that same elevation. So um, usually we, we indicate that uh, uh, lattice work, if permitted by the building department, shall not be below that FEMA elevation okay. plus one. Uh, that should be noted, because one of the things that we have, like on here, there's nothing. And what's going to happen is you've got a note on there saying you can do something down to this. Inevitably, I'm going to get a call from the uh, contractor, and he's going to say to me, what can I do down there? Can I do this? Can I do this? He's going to give me six options. Um, I, don't, I don't want to have those options when we get to that point. Um, so uh, if, if there is something that is going to go down there, it should be defined now, or else um, when it, that time does come, I'm going to find that it's not covered by this, and it will be an additional filing to, to do it. Just so that you're yeah, just right. so the applicant exactly. knows. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We can get that clarified as well and make sure we're uh, again. I, I don't think the intent is to have it in there because uh, if at, if at, we're at 15 here, we're only committed to go to 14. We're only talking about a one foot. Well, it would silly. It would yeah. kind of look silly. So I don't think the intent is to put anything under there, no okay. matter what. But okay. Um, in cases like Salisbury Beach, where the the flood's down at seven and the building is much higher for parking under, we leave that kind of as an open option so that way they can bring it down a part part of the way if they want. But I don't even know why I wrote down a utility shaft. I don't have any issue with it. Uh, your stairs support at your base. Um, all these stairs, according to building code, I, I know that for years everybody bought down, they put them on a couple of blocks down the bottom, mm -hmm. but it's not compliant. And on Plum Island, it's not a good idea. So some type of piling at the bottom of each one of these stairs, uh, short wood piling to hold those. I was going to ask, is that utility shaft typical for Four by four is not too bad. I mean, you could you could force them down as little as three by three. They can still get it in there and kind of get a body in there to, to work if they have to. But I don't know that four by four is, is really outrageous. Yeah, it's not really out of out of character. Typically for um, multi-family dwellings, when we propose those, it's a five by five, and then anything that's single family, we propose as a four by four unless the commission requests something. Um, removed and revegetated. Uh, is there a vegetation? You just doing grass? Is that what you're mm -hmm. offering at this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it, that's something we wanted to, uh, to address with the commission. So, if you look at the, the photos, it's all lawn, um, and I know typically lawn isn't permitted on the Barry Beach. So, the question would be, what type of vegetation would be um, permitted here that wouldn't look out of place? And we literally have a, a patch of doing grass that would kind of be out of place there. So, um, you know, we've run into this before, and we've at least in I've been rather strict about the, uh, the lawns there, but it's something we should probably discuss as a board as to how much injury we can allow on a lawn and have that lawn replaced. Uh, I think if someone ditches across their property, it's, a, um, it's, kind of, uh, it's kind of harsh to take the whole lawn away and insist they go back with dune grass, which is difficult once you've got organics on the site anyway. Um, so how does the board feel about a, uh, a revegetating plant, a revegetated plant? Uh, Area here. I have a, an idea. Where this wall is, is the higher elevation their property as well? It is. So they're probably not going to disturb that with construction. No. So the rest of that probably will be. So that lawn is going to be ripped up anyway with construction equipment. So maybe that's the part that gets revegetated back to natural state and the higher elevation stays as long. So you're suggesting that the lower portion of the property all around the structure would go back to a, like a vegetated dune grass and they would maintain the lawn on the upper level? 
I mean, the lawn's gonna get ruined anyway, so. It's just a thought. Are you ruining this lawn, or are you gonna paint your way out of the closet? I don't. Yeah, I don't think there's any intention to ruin the lawn. I mean, any any minor damage, you know, in the form of you know rust or anything like that, there would just be repaired normally. Um, this portion of the building here, coming, you know, I want to write any plans. I can I can see it coming yeah. coming straight across here. This is lawn now. This is the existing structure mm -hmm. that's there now. So when this is torn up, this is going to be a disturbed surface here, and they were proposing gravel in here. Um, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to revegetate under here too much because I think you're going to have issues with things surviving there. Um, we could put some green grass in there, but it's under the structure, and so we're not. We're going to see a lot of vegetation that will survive here unless it's shade tolerant, uh, and it would have to be native to the beach as well, shade tolerant. Uh, outside of here, we could replant this area here. Uh, you know, with new grass, it just would look a little out of place. Um, but the applicant's obvious, you know, for, for preference here would be to put it back to the lawn, just like the rest of the property, so it all matches. But what, what kind of? Um, I know this is theoretical. But what kind of envisioned usages would go on on that side of the house were it to be just yard? Um, I mean, again, this is where they would have their overflow parking. For their guests and they're parking underneath here so they would be walking you know up the stairs here you know so this is where they'd be accessing the property the other uh, second set of stairs is on this side and then if you look in the uh the drawings there's a, another set of stairs underneath the structure as well so there's several different access points there so this area is going to get utilized pretty heavily i think for access and you know storing of kayaks and yeah the uh, line of thinking i'm going on I like your suggestion. Number one, as you notice, I took your tree icon and yeah. I made a real tree icon out of it that depicts the tree that's on there. So there's a rather large maple in the front of this house. It looks like a maple to me anyways. It is a maple. And it also looks like a double tree that has a split started down the middle of it. So I don't know how healthy it is, um, but I would hate to see it go. If I don't want it to go. You don't want it to? Okay. Um, then why is existing tree to be removed? Well, it, 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 if we have to, we will do that. But if we can keep the tree, I would like to keep the tree. Now, it really doesn't look like, other than the gravel drive, that you're going to get close enough to be injurious to the roots of that tree. Right. So uh, we have retaining walls here that are going to in effect, uh, affect the, the use of the driveway here. And, and because it's such a narrow opening to get two cars in here, um, and then the road ends right here. Their ability to back out of this parking spot and you know make that turn to be able to go, we saw the walls being an issue here, so we suggested the removal of the walls to a point, helping again during the concrete from Barry Beach. Uh, but then it, we we feared that even if we were able to skirt around that tree there, my recommendation to the owners was were to remove it for the simple fact is they're going to hit it. There's just no question about it. I know how I drive. I know how my wife drives. If I was backing out of this, I would hit that tree at least twice a year. So. For, for the sake of saving their vehicles the, in the proximity to it, uh, my recommendation to them at that time. I don't know if that's in the Wellness Protection Act. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's there. So why, why don't we look at it this way? Why don't we go with Brian's suggestion that yeah, instead of trying to put... an asterisk to my suggestion? Okay. Um, I think what would make me cranky about putting lawn back in there would be a, um, how should we phrase it, a high-intensity lawn. You know, the, 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 the high-chemistry... Lots of fertilizing, lots of, you know, that certain shade of uh, neon green. Sure. You know, that probably would be inappropriate. No. You know, so we don't want golf yeah. green, you know. No. Yeah. Other, just with that one asterisk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, 
Um, you know, I'm just sort of looking at the stair, and you're going to walk this way. I mean, I think you might want to use some of your gravel area to connect to the end of that stair, because you're going to need something to, Probably. I mean, might as well show it. I think what we can do as well, because again, this is all previously disturbed from the foundation, we can take this little, little line of gravel that's under here and extend it out to the end of the stairs, that way they can walk straight over and right up and just extend that, that little square there. Yeah, so it's kind of like if we shifted this whole thing over a little bit, we'd have a nice border there for some, you know, <coughs> brushy kind of well, and growth. So, Propose the the, uh, the brushy growth that we're talking about on this side here, and maybe extend this over. So, I mean, it's just a, I'm just seeing a stairway that looks like it's emptying out into a pile of sand. Yeah. Well, currently it's lawn. <laughs> yeah, but eventually you're going to want it's something lawn. down there. I mean, sure. you know, everybody wants something to this stairway, and we find that that these stairways all come down, and then they don't have any pathways that lead them to a common area, to a driveway, and then they always come back in. What can I put down here? Can I put pallets down? Can I do that kind of thing? So we're starting to target those early on and say, look, if you're going to do something there, put it put it on the plan. Show let's see plan. it. And let's yeah, yeah let's, I, let's show I, it. How does the commission feel about like um, flagstone, like the little walkways? Flagstone gets a little patio-like. I mean, something like a uh, shells or uh, a, 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 maybe a crushed slate because it's not live underfoot. Um, and it's not like you'd think. I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but it's a, it's a pretty neat project. It lays pretty flat uh, product. Um, but something like that, something of that sort that's a little less, uh, something that's not consolidated. The other thing I had is I saw a couple of uh, tanks. You've got a couple of propane tanks here, right now. Oh, I'm sorry, right here, right now. And you've cut in. You've got in your narrative, I think, that it's got oil heat. It looked like a lot of gas just for cooking. Are you sure that there's oil heat? I looked at the rest of the pictures and I couldn't see any um, oil <coughs> fill on the outside of the house anywhere. But there might be some confusion there between uh, another project. I don't think my narrative speaks at all to the type of heat that the, the existing structure uses. So. Uh, I'm, I'm actually unfamiliar with the heating system of the existing structure. Is it oil or propane? propane. It's propane. I thought so because I could see a vent up yeah, above too. Propane. I could see the vent yeah. above the tank. I know. I, so I have propane that's why I didn't think it was oil and I don't eat. No. It doesn't matter. I don't even know where I got that <laughs> yeah. impression, but it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah. Um, so, where here are your propane tanks going to go? Well, that, that's so identify that. Um, is this house going to have AC? Yes. Where you're going to yeah. put your compressor? Where's your AC compressor going? Yeah. And make sure that you, and, and remember that you're going to. That's an ignition source. So you're going to have to have some separation yeah. between your tanks and your AC. Right. Um, AC fuel source. I, uh, this one down here. As a matter of fact, it says strongly represented by the design engineer. No building permit be issued. There is an affidavit that needs to be signed and notarized today, when, uh, nowadays, when you're on a barrier beach. Mm -hmm. You will acknowledge when you pick up your building permit that there are no appeals, nothing that you know of that would stop that. So um, that one is, is, is covered. Uh, and it says, homeowner content for the length of time. And, uh, yeah, okay, that'll take care of itself. That will be on the, on the order for conditions. Yes, yeah, this is more, uh, these two notes here are more to put the homeowners on uh, notice um, so that way when they up the phone and they call me three days after it expires. It's a good idea. So we put those on there to make sure right. people understand that they, they're aware of when the expiration is. And I, I, I think of, oh, um, it says on the town material that this has a basement of 800 square feet. It's right now. Yeah. I have a crawl space. Crawl right space, sorry. There, foundation. Uh, is the crawl space above ground or is it below ground? It's above, above ground. It's all above ground. So yes. the, the garage floor is equal with the ground outside? Yes. I'm sorry, the cellar floor? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So there'd be no fill put in there? No. All right. All right. I just wondered where, how we were going to fill that. There is going to be some fill. Yeah, there are. Yeah. yeah. There is, because it's a block foundation and stuff. There is going to be some minimal fill in there. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So. So the the will have to be you know, doing quality sand, meeting the grading requirements that DEG puts out and come down 
You should have a note in here to, to acknowledge that that hole will be filled up level with the uh, adjacent grade. Yes, okay. yes it can. That, well, just it, there are setbacks from windows and right. things like that, but, but yes, it can be. Theoretically, I can see it on this yeah. one. So. Yeah. And then what do you want to do for the planting plan? I interrupted you, but you never finished that thought. Um, well, it sounds to me as though the planting plan, they have some suggestions. I think yours were good. Um, I think that Matt's going to end up having a conversation with the homeowners about that tree out front. <laughs> and um, then maybe they'll come back with a suitable planting plan at the next uh, next meeting. How's that? That's where I tend to leave it. So. Seems good to me. All right. Uh, are there any butters here? Yes. Would you like to speak? Hi, I'm Cheryl Mahoney, um, 6 Block Street, right next door. Um, just, I, you know, to have them do what they need to do, have it by you know, the laws, by whatever the footage is, they can do whatever they need to do. We're doing the best we can. Yeah. So they'll be going to zoning for the height. Um, you know, that's that's something they can't avoid, and the commission, the uh, building inspector can't waive that on Plum Island, even if mm -hmm. they meet all of the dimensional requirements. So they will be taking a trip to zoning. Yeah. We live in there? Kelly? Mm -hmm. Kelly? Yes, Hi, Kelly Bravo, 712 Street, also a neighbor. Um, anything that helps uh, secure people, our neighborhood, Would anyone else like to speak? Then I'll entertain a motion to continue this hearing to the November 20th date. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Matt. We have a notice of intent to tear down an existing single-family home and construct a new single-family home from Susan Richard Cementelli at 952nd Street. One spot says three feet, the other spot says two. One, one spot? Yeah. On the plan? Yeah, uh, right here. Oh, okay. Right here it says two. Yeah. 
and it might be in your narrative that says three. I noticed yeah, that was on the spot. Yeah. It said three, but I, I would kind of caution you against the two because yeah. the two is the dead Are on exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if it's you know twenty three and seven eighths, it's a problem. Yeah. You know? And so yeah, during construction, things happen, and I, I would yeah. you'd be smarter to stick to the thirty inches. Yeah. Um, there was a slight elevation change on, on the site. Uh, the uh, the new dwelling will will meet zoning setbacks uh, in all dimensions. The current uh, building does not, obviously. Um, as uh, as a mitigation measure, we're going to be uh, adding uh, beach grass to areas that are now that are currently uh, grass in or under the existing building. Um, so there's going to be about approximately a forty percent increase in beach grass. There is a, an area of beach grass in the, in the south, uh, I think it's the, the southwest corner, I'm sorry, the southeast corner of a lot existing. Uh, yeah, that's basically the front existing yeah. beach grass. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to be adding here and here, um, and some of what is here was, is under the existing building. Okay. Um, so there's no increase in, in impervious. There's uh, uh, an increase in native vegetation. What's this little area right here? What, what are you going to do? That's, that's going to be grass. Okay. Yeah. Young grass? Just 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 no, just turf grass. Oh, we're going to yeah. leave what's on on site out on that yeah. side. Yeah. So yeah. So that um, and that so that um, it's not all. So there's there's no real driveway here now, and this looks. I think this is thirty feet. Uh, yeah. How, how, how come so feet. wide? Well, it's going to be for three three days. Right? Well, you're only allowed two. That's only allowed two. Yeah. And, and what I did is, I, if you had three, I really wouldn't take them away from you, but I really had trouble finding three. As a matter of fact, I had trouble finding where they parked at all, I, well, to be I, honest yes, with you. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so, because it kind of does not currently get used that, that much. So unfortunately, when you have, and you know, your rules are your rules, but when you have two, people have two vehicles and then someone comes to visit, where do they park? Do they I park am, on the native vegetation? Or? You know something, and I understand that's a problem, but within our wetlands bylaw, for those properties on Plum Island that don't have adequate parking, they may have two parking spots of each uh, 9 by 18 as long as they comply with all the other dune standards. So that's what you're allowed. Um, so for a 30-foot driveway where none existed, um, you're, you're really reaching out for there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you're reaching out there. Uh, two and a half story dwellings. You're only allowed two. Where's your half story? Well, is uh, that your hung basement you're counting, or is that an attic space? Yeah, that's an attic space. Not going to happen. Okay. I didn't see it on your plan. I didn't see a attic or third story uh, floor plan. I saw. Uh, right. I saw some windows up there, but yeah, that's not that's uncommon. It. So, um, but that cannot be. So now, was that part of your FAI calculation? Big part. Did you use that space up there as part of your FAR when you did your FAR? Or didn't you do FAR yet? I'm not familiar with the FAR. Oh, no. You know what you did? You used the FAR requirement for your lot coverage. Lot coverage is 20, is 20 max, not 25. 25 is FAR. You're going to get into the FAR when you then take this design. Um, zoning does okay. both the 20 and the 25%. Uh, but it is a reduction in, in um, uh, lot coverage. It is slightly. Uh, I, I took a look at it. I did it twice, as a matter right. of fact. And the first time, and I agree, it's at 21.7 now. Yeah. First time I did it, I came to 21.2. But then I believe it's 21.406. <laughs> and then it goes, yeah. whoops, excuse me. It goes on forever. Is, is what is proposed. All right. The, the, the other thing I was looking at is there seems to be this set of ghost stairs um, wherever I look. There's this. this when I first saw it, I looked under, I forget where it was, and, yeah, I, and I, yeah, and I saw, well, here it is here. It's kind of ghosted here, and it goes up onto the deck. It's uh, ghosted here, and it goes up onto the same deck. Uh -huh. It's just the other side of the house. And then it's shown here. When I was looking at it here, I thought, maybe it's a stairway on the other side. It took yeah. me a long time to figure out that it's, um, I'm not sure what well, it is. They, they, that must be something that when he uh, drew that he raised. Okay, it's not supposed to be on there. And I, I thought maybe it was on there and you took it off because it, it blew you over the 20%, or the, actually the 21.7. Well, that, that may have been that you had. 
Okay, may have been then. All right. Uh, what else did I have for you? Uh, where's your fuel going? What you got for fuel, and where are you going to store that? Well, that I believe is going to be in the uh, suspended storage area. Well, you got oil heat? I don't know what the heat's going to be. You're not putting propane in there. You can't put propane in there. Absolutely no, not. Yeah, so absolutely. we have to show where it's being stored yes. outside. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so if it's going to be propane, it's got to be out yeah. from underneath the dwelling. Okay. No question. Okay. Uh, we need a piling plan. I don't think we have one, do we? Even on these, uh, I don't see. I didn't see one. No, not uh, not other than what, what you see for. Uh, okay, for the, they can be shown right on your right on your site okay. view. You know, show us show us okay. some and draw in extras if you need to. You can always take them away. You can't add them. Okay. All right. Uh, stair touchdowns, the same as you heard me say before. There that should be some. Yeah, there that should be something some at the bottom of your stairs. 30-foot driveway we've already addressed. Uh, what is the allowed width of the driveway? Uh, well, you're allowed two 9 by 18 spots. And that is uh, chapter 95, okay. uh, tonnage of wetlands by law. You'll okay. find it in there. And, and that does not involve, uh, as far as the, um, the, the uh, path that goes to the stairs from the driveway, that does not? No, I, that no, no, okay. no I, I, I just, again, that's something that is actually beneficial to the resource. If you give people a place to walk, they'll use yeah, it. So. Right. And the other thing, other thing I have was a fence encroachment, but I just didn't point it out. I did that yeah, myself. that's existing. Yeah. Are the uh, utilities coming? Where they touch the ground? No. Well, not really. Yeah, well, your your shaft where they touch the ground, but then how do they come into the existing home? Do you know? I don't know. With the, the Usually, we see the connections out to the, the street. street. Yeah. And how the trenches? Where the trenches? Right. And if it's down the driveway, great. But you can find your connection could be over here. I'm not sure where it is. Yeah, it will probably um, stay where it's existing. Right now. See if we is too small anyway, so I can't tell. It's 13. Not nine. It's really old at elevation nine. It's uh, according to the uh, engineer. any nine left anywhere out there. Nine was uh, NGVD, right? The old, yeah. the old 1929. And then they went to eight foot. I think it's 1984, isn't it? Well, yeah, it, was, it, it was either in 84 or 88. The current map sorry, is two, yeah, the current yeah. map's 2014. So if that's 88, that datum right there was the original datum of 29. They changed it to the datum of 88, and it went to 8 feet. Even though it went up 3 inches, it went down to 8. Uh -huh. uh, and then it went to 13. Okay. So all the base so, and all the area behind, behind the Plum Island now is AD 13. It's all, it's all 13? Yes. Okay. Yes, not 9. Yeah. He's got flood zone right through here. Here's your 13 mark right here. So he's got flood zone from the basin up this way right to here. So he's, he'll, he's going to be constructed in the flood zone. Right, but we'll be well above the flood zone. Oh, yeah. Oh, you'll yeah. elevate yeah. it above it. There's no, right. yeah, there's no bar against yeah. constructing a flood zone. Right. Anything else uh, for the applicant? Uh, any butters here? Yes. Yes, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, please. 
Hi, my name is Terry Cry. I'm uh, a buyer on the um, east side of the property. My, my family has uh, owned the cottage for 40 years uh, plus. Um, my grandmother used to own actually this cottage next door. And uh, like, I, like I told Michael, I said I still occasionally go over and help with the lawn a little bit. Um, the, uh, the couple of questions about the setback. And, and I don't know, I'm not a building guy at all or whatever. I'm only okay. here because I got the notice. Um, it says in the corner in the legend, the plan is a 10 foot requirement. But if I look at that, it goes to the, the bottom part of the building where, where it meets the ground, it would probably be piles, I guess. That's 10 feet away from the property line. But then there's multiple sort of overhangs and then a, a stair of some sort that seems to encroach upon that setback. Is that something that's allowed? Is it is it to the the, the foundation that you measure or is it to the, 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 the closest um, structure to the property line. The zoning board has an overhang limit. So uh, I, I, it used to be 12 inches. So if you put a standard 1 by 12, 11 and a quarter board up there for a soffit, and that's all you had for an overhang, was a one foot overhang, we measured to the edge of the building. If you're somewhere around 18, 24 inches now, I think that's where zoning calls it, they will, con they will take the overhang into consideration once it gets out beyond a certain inch mark, and I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Um, I just, just like stairways that. definitely count as part of a setback. Yeah. Uh, since, since we discussed that out in the hallway, I took another look at the plan, and actually, uh, the, it, it is 10 and a half feet from the stair, and if you come up here, I can show you the, uh, the scale on, on the plan. Well, I'm seeing, that, I'm seeing it drawn a little differently on the plan that I got from, the, from your office. Well, yeah, that's not, that's not the full scale. This is a full scale. So uh, one inch is 10 feet. So if you look here, that's to the building foundation. It's one inch. And if you look here, it's one inch from the property line to the stair. So. Um, well, that, right, if that is drawn correctly. The, 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 other, the other question. I, <clears throat> that's a good comment. I'll tell you, and I, before uh, you go too far, if you've got that right on the 10 foot mark. It's 10 and a half. So that's, that's, okay, that's all right, all right. Like. That's, that's, that's yeah, a dangerous that, place to go. And, exactly. All right. Ten and a half to the foundation, though, and then this is uh, this, there's an overhang that shows. I mean, no, it's it's, it's, it's right there. This is this is one inch from the from the uh, stair to the property line. That's ten feet. That is, that is the scale. That's the scale. Draw, yes. Drawn by by a licensed surveyor. Yeah. Scaled and stamped. Yes. Okay. Coming I mean, out. Because as you can see in this, you know, you're coming out, this is the side of the face my property, you're coming out, you know, once, twice to that, that roof soffit. Yep. And my building is one and a half stories tall. It's on, it's on a concrete foundation, so, you know, it's been there forever. Um, there's a floor and a, another floor and a half. So as we get higher up in elevation, we'll be reaching out and, you know, through the windows and saying hello. Um, it's hard to say. It looks like that overhang lines up with that stairway. So I, I would say in this case, the Zoning Board of Appeals would take that point or this point, whichever is closer, um, and not these points. Because when you add that with that, I'm sure that it's over that, um, their limit that they set. So as a layman, though, this guy knows his trade. Why is, it, why is there an error on his plan? I should, I should say then, then 10. No, it's ten and a half. It's ten and a half. Ten and a half to there. Okay, ten, ten to there. Okay. No, okay. no engineer would no. build to ten or should be built yeah. to ten. Okay. That is so dangerous because if you're off an eighth of an inch, yeah. um, you could tear that up. You know, the, the neighbor could come and say, yeah, "Look, I want to go." My goal is that to whatever the, whatever plan that they're going to do, it gets approved by all the right people, and then if they, you know, then it's built to the way the plan is, so we're not, you know, changing things until things different. Um, the other thing is there's a fair amount of beach grass here. This is sort of a secondary thing that you mentioned that between there's uh, the existing yeah the, the existing this is this is all beach grass out through here right um, and, and I'll you know you know what well, 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 somewhere around that so you claim that there's going to be um, less or it's not going to be impacted. I mean you're going to have less beach grass there when it's done. No, we're going to add beach grass here and back here, and it'll okay. be contiguous with the beach grass which is already existing in this in this corner. Okay. There'll be more, and when the plan gets revised yeah, to so show the current property, yeah, we'll it'll, it'll, it'll actually grow. It'll yeah. be even yeah. greater. I mean, we, yeah. we know times are changing, and this is this is inevitable. That the house that's there is really not habitable. It's really really worn down. So you know, we're expecting to get something to go up. Um, the other thing, about a year or so ago, there were a couple of wooden wedges that were driven into the property line right above here, and I and I went to Rich Suntelli and said, you know, I, you know, you're uh, cheating yourself. 
But I just want to make sure that this is this is drawn to the, the, the point that my, myself and my neighbors have been honoring for years. That that I um, I got a I got a survey done in two thousand four, and that that pin I believe is 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 the common um, boundary. So I just want to make sure that we're on that. They likely are on it. It says iron pin found. Okay. Um, so they likely found that pin you're talking about, and they know that. Sure. <laughs> um, and then the height, the height of the building, and I don't know, um, it, it just seems really high, 35 feet, not into the peak, but to some measure, like in that window with the two and a half story mark. We have no jurisdiction over that, but I'll tell you, it's it's 35 feet from mean grade to mean of the of the highest roof surface. So that's the allowed. So you're right. You're, a building could theoretically be 43, 42, 43 feet high with a pitch on the roof. Because of the pitch. So it's the, you take the total dimension of the roof and you find the mean exactly. of that. Exactly. And, that, that and same that. with the grade. So, but that's permissible. 35 is, it is. is, the, is the maximum limit. It is. Okay. Um, and again, that's awarded by the Zoning Board of Appeals. So that's something that they will be asking for would be the increase in height. Because they're exceeding it? Or? Yeah, well, they're exceeding the exist the height of the existing structure, oh, okay. so they're going to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, even though that 35 feet is sort of an as a right, because they're increasing the height and the lots are non-conforming means all the structures are non-conforming, they have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Because the next, so I should get some other, another notice along the way. Correct. Say that we're going to have an opportunity just to follow the process. Yes, and that would be the proper time to bring up your setback questions, your height questions um, in front of them. Okay. Um, and my sister, uh, Sheila Gullman, is with me. Do you want to say anything? Um, no, we'll just go to the next meeting. Okay. Just to Thank you for your information. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow through. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. I have uh, just a question or a comment. Maybe um, it would help, I think, if we're coming back. You know, we're not closing today, which seems unlikely, to see some aerial photography indicating that these planting areas are, in fact, suitable for replanting. Oh, well, we have the photographs. It's not very good. It's the you know if I pulled it up any more, Dan, it got really fuzzy. Yeah, uh, you know it, it looks like there's a little bit of mixed vegetation in here. The soils are darker here. It doesn't look like sand in here, but I can't tell what it is from here. You know, that's just. And we got some pictures here. And then yeah. well, we got to remember too that this lot is only 65 feet wide. Uh, no, it's 70 feet wide on this lake. 65 on this lake right here. So, I mean, this is an example of what you're That's at the street. Yeah, that's probably where they park, I would imagine. That's probably right here, Dan. Yeah. Well, it's not probably, it is right there. Yeah. You know, actually, to follow up on that, just that um, something in the next set of plans might be helpful is a little call out on um, the sections of dune grass that are being lost or added or maintained and what their square footages happen to be, just so that we can look over. Have a, have a better sense of, you know, this section here versus that section there, you know, and all the well, we, uh, This is going to be added, these two that are shown with the... Right, and I'm thinking especially of the piece sort of under here, under this cutoff, and how that compares to sort of the piece over here, you know, and like so how this layout changes and how much gets added. Uh -huh. You okay. know, just so yeah, that so as we're skimming and scanning, okay. we're going to do our own so sets of the arithmetic. Actually, what's going to happen, Brian, is this almost because of the configuration of the home, you're going from 21.7 lot coverage to 21.406, so it's almost going to be identical when you, when you compare the two footprints. You're almost going to be identical. Yeah, I, I just, you know, as I was looking at it, um, you know, like I was just having trouble conceptualizing it, and, you know, it reminded That's me. That's basically what I was saying. You know, I just, the, the more you can show us about it. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'll see if I can get a better aerial of that. Just to, just Straight down with the photo or something. Okay. Just to kind of complete the record on it, too. Okay. Yes, you have another there, comment? There was a tree that I'm um, just curious if it was going to stay or not. It's been growing. You know, it was very small a few years back, and it was getting getting larger. I don't know if it's going to be part of the new. Um, yeah, we hadn't, I hadn't discussed that with the owners, but we'll, we'll uh, look into that. Would you like to have that stay with you? The, 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 uh, the smaller shrubs along the house will have to come down, obviously, because they'll be under the. 
the new the new section. But I understand that. No, it, it, it doesn't need to. I'm just curious either way that it's it, it, it provides some privacy, but it also blocks the view and it's uh, we're pretty, pretty close to the house. Yeah, it but really grew up out of the house, and I know that it's, it's yeah. going over to the neighbors, and it's uh -huh. you know my my. I actually would rather it down so that we could see the basin a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Another tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can work that out. Yeah, yeah. we'll be here next time. Why don't you work that out with the uh, with the owners? <laughs> yeah. and we'll see what we can do. Okay. Uh, anything else? Yes, Doug. I just want to clarify something. Um, just there is an area, it's 89, I believe this site is in it. It goes AE 13 right near the new report border to AE 11 to AE 9 to AE 17. So there's a sandwich of nines. So okay. Mike's right. probably right. And they'll skin in the game. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll double check. If, if, but but if, he's, if he's using NGVD, he's not right. No, 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 it's, it's 988. It's, it's NGVD. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll Straighten that out yeah. for us, yeah. please. I will. Anything else? Uh, no. We, well, Anything else, Gordon? We, we do not have a, a DP file on the last I checked. We do not. This afternoon. That I know of. But at any rate, you know, we'll um, certainly uh, uh, be willing to uh, continue to the community. Uh, we do not that I can see, actually. Um, so to the board, I will entertain a motion to continue the public hearing to the November 20th date. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Thank you. Thank you. A notice of intent to replace a failed septic system within the area of recent filling from Francis Thistlewood at Tumacon Road. Yeah, they just look, yeah, they look the same. That's a welcome back. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's why these are smaller dashes and those are bigger dashes. And it's the same dash. We were making this, but I just labeled it as a hundred for welcome back. Oh, it's over there. Bill, did you okay. give uh, Jen your, uh, Thank you. your information? <laughs> I didn't know that. Five minutes. 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 Soil, so we went 
down further closer to the hunt for pepper and got reasonable soil. I thought it was burnt, so I went halfway back and had a third hole and we hit an active system. This is not the only three bugs. <laughs> <laughs> so we couldn't go here. And there's no other room here. There's rock outcrops through here. So I went back to the back of the property where we did the two holes, one here, one here. There is Well, this corner right here, um, there's a few trees in here. Most of it was poison ivy. They treated it. Um, what, what, are you going to save trees in here? What's, what's the yeah, result have, of this going to be? We have about a, a two-foot fill in through here. It's open now. And we have the original grades from the grade we need to uh, form the system to get from the BOA. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a three-to-one slope down. So that they could possibly weld it. I mean, trees that are there. to give the board a little bit of history about this, how we got to this project, is I received a complaint that there had been fill placed in the backyard. So I went up here and sure enough, there was fill here and this was all had been treated with an herbicide. Um, you could tell they had targeted poison ivy. There was some concern that there were poison soils and this kind of turned into a little bit of a mess. It seems like everything has settled and calmed down now. Um, but originally I had come over here to instruct them and I actually, I talked to them and they started a notice of intent for the mitigation of the soil. So in this file you'll notice that there's another notice of intent here that was started to be made out by the homeowner. Um, that was to fix this issue. Then this arose and it really helped take care of the issue because now that soil is going to be removed, the septic system is going to be put in place. But that's how this whole thing evolved. Hmm. So, test kit three. First of all, I love the, uh, the abandoned test hole. That's very important. Uh, but do we have any sense of the footprint of the system that you found? Um, I don't. We hit it right there. Um, so we. we it's, it it's, it, it's almost to them. And they have already, they're under a uh, Board of Health order to, uh, that is now a tight tank. They flushed some dye through it. It took about 30 seconds for the dye to come out in this yard. Um, so it was proven that it was their system. Um, they're tight tanked and they're under an emergency order to get it repaired because you can only hold on to a tight tank for, is it six months, Bill? If you look at a tight tank, something around that anyway. And that's going to bring you into the middle of winter. And at that point there, you can no longer be on that tight tank. So. These folks are under the gun too to remedy that. Okay. So, um, just wondering, in terms of the remedy, uh, if that will that be removed from the property? Will that say, in a speaking, open up for use, or 
or not? not? Is that the wrong way to think about it? Well, it, it's up to these people. If they wanted to sue to get that off the property, I guess. But usually when a septic system is decommissioned, if there's no reason to pull it out, if you're not rebuilding it in place, usually they're crushed. You throw that, you pump them, crush them, throw that line in them, and you, and you decommission them in place, so, you know, according yeah, yeah. to DEB. Um, because you know, why would you want to dig that stuff up and carry it all over the place? So it wouldn't take very long after you stop using it for biological activity to consume what's left and, and die off. Right, so, it dies off. Yeah. Um, the biggest issue is the amount of room. You're running out of room. And if you really don't want to put the system back in the same spot as that, you're probably being sort of contaminated. No, no, that would flow the other way. How do you keep it now? Well, you could put and it down. See the stuff. This is the part where I don't know anything about septics, and I'm just getting my, uh, my one-on-one. Okay. You can see the size of the system we need. It probably wouldn't fit in this Right, area. you already rejected tested two and tested one right, in the first place. Right. So it was kind of like we were at the wrong <laughs> at that point. If we had gotten one here, yeah, we may have, uh, I'm not even sure which, this is probably the same vein of material for here. Uh, but I guess, anyway, uh, usually when you find a couple bad ones, it's, you want to put them else. <laughs> you kind of realize you're not, you're not going to get anything else. Any other questions or concerns from the board? Are there any butters here? Would anyone like to speak on this project? Just assume I'm done. I can uh, rant for a uh, day. Don't worry, I'll come back to oh, you. Okay. If you uh, just holding your rant for a minute there, and I'll, I'll be right back to you. All right, all right. Uh, no one wants to speak except for you, so go ahead. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Story of my life. Um, <laughs> so. The one detail that I'm not picking up on. So, um, can you? Is there uh, the um, what's the word? But like the lateral play. Is there any? Um, not a lot because it's more to be steeper here, so we we're kind of running out of room to grade. And to push this over, this grade has to go further down, and then we'd be out of off the property. Uh, that's why we kind of kept it so it's 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 almost as flat here, and, and the grade's higher in the back here, so it's kind of fit grade wise there. something going on here and here and over there. And so the activity of that happened to be footprinted where some other stuff was going on, it wouldn't necessarily be a new impact. Yeah. And well, well, I, can, I can tell you that the whole way across that backyard has been impacted in some way. Um, for the unpermitted fill, the unpermitted fill was completely across here, and then the herbicide treatment was in here. Mm -hmm. um, so the whole thing was, was altered in some manner. It's actually uh, what uh, you, you saw. You see, there's a bunch of boulders down here. Yeah. Boulders came out of '95. I think they actually the boulders that came out of '95. Back in the '70s when they redid '95. So a lot of the spoils from '95 were mm -hmm. thrown in there. So there's a bunch. There's three, four foot of the boulders. And, uh, yeah. So this could be tough. Hard to work with. Yeah, we have to work with from the septic. Yeah. Try to avoid that. So that was the other reason why we didn't go down that way. You can grade over. There are no other questions or concerns. I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you, Bill. Almost, almost done. We have 
a notice of intent to replace a deck platform, conduct landscape work, and after the fact approval for repairs to an existing revetment from Jacqueline McKenna at 11 Riverside. And this is on the line. Um, all right, for the record, I'm Tom Hughes with Hughes Environmental Consulting here on behalf of Jacqueline McKenna. Um, as described in the notice of intent, back after the storms, uh, the property owner and, and the resident um, didn't go through the procedures that were described in the emergency uh, declaration at the time uh, to do some work on the revetment. Revetment also included uh, knocking out um, the dock that uh, you can see in aerial photographs. And I printed some of the 2007 photometry uh, view. So you can see the dock as it existed in 2007. Right here, you can see it again in 2013. Um, so the dock had been there for a little bit and got knocked out. Um, you guys stopped the work on the property before you got around to rebuilding anything for the dock. My recommendation to him was to pull the permanent structure <coughs> back above the highest spring tide line so that it's less susceptible to getting hit by wood rise. Um, so the permanent structure is less susceptible to you know flood damage and things like that. And then connect with a, a ramp out to the float. So the existing float is still out there. The judge and he's got to walk through the mud to get to it. So what, what we're going to do is um, basically build a platform up on sonic tubes. It'll be elevated up at least two feet to the bottom above the dune, and um, and then from there a, uh, a ramp floated or a ramp out to the float. The um, there are existing uh, helical anchors out there that we just continue to use those. The uh, rock that was placed is not really all the appropriate size that you would expect for a revetment like that. Um, so we've proposed that the, the, uh, any additional maintenance on an ongoing basis. Um, I think we have a note in here to notify the commission before any maintenance is done right here. And uh, we call for a size of 9 to 18 inches in diameter, you know, rough diameter for, for stone. <coughs> shouldn't be small trap rock and uh, you know at least without further study I wouldn't call for anything larger and that's certainly consistent with the other revetments that are in that area. Um, the other work that would be done is um, this area in here is kind of a lawn area. Um, we'd like to add some sand around that area of the platform. Um, that will become somewhat of a sort of sand patio and then in this sort of dune-like feature that's right here, we'd like to supplement that with some additional native plantings. I've given you a plant list. Uh, in the notice, what I'd like to do is provide the commission at the time of planting with a more detailed list of the actual plants that we will use and, and show you where they would go. The um, problem right now is if I told you what we were going to plant in the plant sizes, they probably won't be available. Um, 
native plants are getting really hard to find, especially the more popular varieties and sizes that we like to use. Because it's not like you can just instantly get a four foot plant. You have to not sell it at a three to six inch and then not sell it at a six to 12 and not sell it yada yada to get to a three or four. So we'll look at plant availability and come up with a plant list um, in the spring that's appropriate for that. Um, the other thing, there's a fence proposed down along the riverside. Um, and uh, we also showed, uh, we, we came up with a draft plan and uh, Doug had asked that we actually show the existing parking. So we actually do show the existing parking, which is pretty extensive and you can actually see that in one of the photos that's in the line. Here's a shot of that parking area. Um, and, uh, and I've talked to Mr. Kent's uh, resident who will be parking in there. They need so, to stop doing that. Yes. We've no. talked about that. Yeah, no, so. we, we've had that discussion and, yeah. and he's agreed to, uh, to do that. So. Okay. Um, don't think I've missed anything. I think so. Essentially, you know, we're looking to properly repair the revetment and then be able to do that on an ongoing basis, not changing. And we do have some some notes here about you know limited to the existing riprap area, um, the, the limit on the size, um, and you also can't, you know can't go outside the footprint. So this is not a permit to expand it. It's not a permit to do anything. Just be able to maintain it over the years and to notify the commission before that maintenance is done, so you're aware of it. Um, and then it's a permit to reestablish a dock, but one that's more seasonal in nature, in terms of within the basin and you know below the, the high tide line. Something that's more durable and less likely to get damaged. It's not. Bulletproof. This is a, an AD13, and if we were to put the platform up too high, we'd be completely wrong. Game plan because we need to, to put the dock out pretty far. Uh, so we're kind of limited there, but but still, it's uh, you know overall, I think it's a reasonable approach at at permitting the issues out there and, and getting it to within an area where the commission can can you know can control things. This has been sent to marine fisheries because we're proposing the maintenance below the high water of a, of a coastal water body. And it's also been sent to uh, natural heritage because basically just about everything from here forward is uh, endangered species habitat. So that gets a 30-day uh, clock. I don't think we've received the letter yet. Yeah, Division of Marine Fisheries wants um, 30 inches underneath it. I saw something today. All under the existing float? Yeah. They want to table it. They want either table it or put some skids under it. And they right. want to see 30 there. And it might have been the clams. I can't remember what the exact comments were. but I'll talk to the client. My view on the float is that's a, an existing feature that we're not proposing to alter. We're just proposing to connect to it differently. So the, the float Interesting is Interesting position. Well, the float's not a subject to the permit. And I can show you that it's existed for quite some time. So How about, about this? this? This is going to be the subject of zoning, that structure right there. Um, not aware, since it's a freestanding patio structure, that it would trigger zoning. So I, I'll have to it will. I'll have to check on that. I did. Okay. Yeah, I did. Okay. I, I checked with the building inspector, and he said that would uh, that would be a structure that would be subject to the zoning. So any. Any permanent dock structure? I just asked him about this particular okay. one because because it's got such an encroachment into town. I, I've got an issue with this too. I'm working within the town property. Um, right. Uh, it, it's uh, for this commission to give you permission to work in the right of way when right now we've got such a push on Plum Island well, to we're, define. Well, we're asking. Yeah, we're asking for the permission to alter the the resource area, and it's not granting any town permission to do anything we don't have permission to do. Um, the the, the thing with Riverside Drive is that it has evolved to be this. I know on the ownership is here, but as 
that that doesn't, no, no, that doesn't, that doesn't grant any rights. No, that doesn't mean the town might not want its right of way back. Absolutely because correct. Because it's down there. Right, so. and simply because you permit within this property the maintenance of the resource areas doesn't grant them. In my, in my view, if the town undertakes a project to, to realign that, anything permitted here goes. This, so this, if, it, if this is a size and shape issue, I'm not aware of zoning ever taking a stand on a platform for a dock. We've done a bunch of them. Um, if it's an issue of dimensions, we can change that. That's not a thing. So we'll talk to Sam and see talk what the issue with that is. Um, what has been here for the longest time and, and what was destroyed this past spring, you can see there's an equivalent permanent platform. It was just out over the water there. When was it permitted? Um, I don't know. Was I, it ever permitted? I have no idea. So, I, so like, you're, you're, call, you're, you're taking grandfathering for a structure that might not, know, that might not ever have been permitted? That's true. I, okay. I, I have not looked at the permitting history here. What I've okay. looked at is a reasonable group of older areas that, gotcha. that I have, and I see it. So it's not something that just um, got built. You, no, again, the yeah. only reason this gives me hot is it's in the right of way. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's no, a no, big okay, issue for no, us right now. So. Absolutely. So, so, so this is not in the right of way. The stone, the stone, and some of the sand that we're proposing I, to place. I agree. I can see what's inside the lot lines. Um, this is at least protective of what's there within the right of way now. As I said, if that right of way, the right of way extends to here. Beyond here is Commonwealth Highway. I will discuss this with Town Council and yep. see if um, they're agreeable that a citizen should be working out here. Right. And this, yeah, so this is the after the fact. As stuff. far as this goes and the setback yeah. goes, you've already got an existing line of buildings that's about three inches off your property line. Right. So you're not going to have to move it much to get into no. compliance. You might still have to go to zoning, right. but you should be able to get relief, relief right. to alter and extend an existing line of form. Right, but I, I do want to see, I, I agree with, I don't think that should be a problem given the existing setbacks and given you know, I can show and I have to go back further to see what the history on that dock is. Um, but this is work that was done to the to the thing. And so we show this area. We're asking for the permission to add this additional sand and to add this structure entirely within the property line. Um, we're at, we are asking for the after the fact forgiveness on the work that was done outside that and the ability to do maintenance. But um, we're not asking you to grant us any property rights that we, can. That we don't have. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't. Not. Um, and, uh, and since we are still within the 30-day clock, now I have not seen the marine fisheries comments, so if you can send them to me, they should. Lately, they've been sending them to the towns and not to the applicants, which has been... It's a little frustrating. Yeah. yeah. So if you can forward that to me. Okay, really I can do that. Because yeah. we're the ones who have to like figure out what our response is. And I can talk to them about whether or not to do that. Um, but as I said, that float has been there long enough that I'm not so sure um, that it needs to be the subject of permitting right now. We just get to connect with it. But maybe we can take it up. You had table legs on the float. Your ramp angle improved. It does, yeah. No, it definitely, it definitely improves. It makes it up more awkward if you have a boat tied up to it. That's one of the reasons they wanted well, what it what ends up doing is so your boat ends up on the side of sitting on the mud, yeah, as opposed to. Yeah, how deep is the water here at low tide? Yeah. Oh, it's it's a mud flat. It's yeah, there's no water. Um, low water for the basin is basically in debris port somewhere. There is no low water. You can clam right across the basin at low tide. Mm -hmm. yeah. So technically, a lot of the property lines um, extend to low water. And I would not want to see somebody ever fully survey what that would look like. That'd be, be a bunch of. All right, let's. Um, so, so with that, I guess I would ask if you have any questions, um, and then look for a list of any things you'd like from us, and then uh, and then ask to continue to the next meeting. Okay, I think confirmation from Sam relative to that structure. What he, what's he going? What is he going to do about that? Yeah. Um, I am going to uh, ask a town attorney for. I should do it the other way around. Maybe you should provide proof that you can work on it right away. I think that's 
usually how actually how it should flow. You, you show that you have permission, that you have some right to work here. I'll give it to town attorney. She'll agree or disagree. How's that? Would yeah. that be tied up if you know if this is a permitted you know thing and it's actually like a legit grandfather, right? Then that uh, allowance should be in the original permit. Well, one would Arguably. think so. Well, I, who knows? I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if the original, if this, if number one, there's an original permit that yeah. exists. Um, number two, if um, anyone even realized where the lot lines were when they, I don't, you know, it's hot. Who, who knows? More, it, more, it, so, who knows? So more than likely, this just evolved over, you know, 70, 80 years. This was not something, my guess is this didn't start under this current property owner. It's just, this evolved like that. This, this neighbor, well, I, that's why I did the green, no, right here, see, right in front of you, Kevin, where it says Riverside, yeah. you yeah. see those green lines? Well, you see where it says Riverside Drive, that's where the road should be. The green lines are where the road is. So this guy that's to the south of Riverside Drive, he's given up about five to 10 feet of his property, and this guy, oh, he's gained it. Yeah. Um, so it's a mess in there, it comes down like a snake. When you, when you yeah. walk down there and you try and figure it out where the road is, you, you can't. Oh, yeah. uh, it's like, oh my goodness, yeah. where does this thing really belong? Um, and you can see it when you get it on a drawing. Right, and, it, and, and anybody who's put a road in is actually going on the property of culvert. Yes. Right? Yeah, so, are. you know, I'm not saying that, that he's got a right to do any work here, but this has evolved there, and I think to fix that would involve an awful lot of permitting on, on behalf of the town um, to remove this stuff. You could put that in your opinion. Um, and and to right the wrong over here, you're looking, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna fill that? Are you gonna leave that open? I mean, it, it, it's a quandary. But um, what we're looking for is permission sort of here and out this way to maintain the existing structure. Um, and depending on what he's looking to do with maintenance, if it's if it's minor stuff above above knee high, he may not trigger any kind of Army Corps Chapter 91 stuff. If he gets into anything more extensive, there may be other permitting that's required. But from the commission, you know, we're looking to have no further alteration occur other than maintaining existing. So from a wetland protection point of view, that's Tom, a you know, we've seen this quite a few times yes. in the past, and you know. Just strictly speaking, this and the riprap repair, it's not a big deal. Right. It's only because of the configuration and the mess that we've got this corner. Right. That's all. Right. No, so I'll meet with yeah. Sam and see if there's anything we can do that's at least less impactful to the town. But um, as I said, this has been there, you know, in some form or another, at least 11 years, you know, from what I want to print it for tonight. Okay. Can you put just a little uh, maybe timeline or history together and then I can give that to, to the best uh, I can. Yeah. Yeah, 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 the best you can. That's yeah. all you can do. Yeah. What information you have. And the other thing that shows in that 2007, you can clearly see that that whole thing was riprapped at the time as well. Okay. So, um, do, you, do you know for a fact where the natural heritage line is? Yeah, it's in. Um, I mean, it might be helpful just to show. I'm just thinking that this fence, you know, this in here, this proposed fence might. Yeah, well, well natural heritage is actually reviewing the whole thing. This is the line. So it's running basically right across the face of the house, um, through the deck. Oh, through the deck. Through the deck. It's, yeah. or, well, yeah, it's cutting kind of through the deck like that. Um, and then it actually goes through the house on the other side, which is rare. They usually cut it along the face of the house. Yeah, I don't know why they, well, th those are just two layers laid over each other, so they may or may not be right in place. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna, I'm gonna, before the next meeting, I'm going to read the metadata. This is the August, 2017 layer. I want to make sure that it's not normalized to a different aerial photograph because that might make it a slight shift. But mm -hmm. there's no doubt we're proposing work within that area, so we've sent it off to Natural Heritage. No, but I think Dan was more going to the fence right. line. That's all. And it looks yeah, like you're pretty close to being right on the edge of where that. Yeah, but that's the Natural Heritage will tell us if that's an issue or not. It really depends on what it's looking for. You know, a fence isn't going to. A clamp, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I got it. However, it's a 20 inch turtle sand, all bets are off. Um, anything else? Uh, uh, just one uh, you were saying that you can't pick the plants, obviously, because you haven't found the nursery and all that jazz, but um, maybe a little bit more um, color, shall we phrase it? You know, they're like in 
intended tree, intended shrub, you know, if you want to rip things up or add, you know, whatever. Yeah, we're not looking at really removing, we're looking at just at adding, um, unless there are invasives in there. And actually, my narrative, I'm not current. In the narrative, I actually gave a full species list, if you take a look in there, the of, of what type of plant and what kind of density for the types of plants. So it's on the second page or third page of the narrative. Oh, yeah. Those, that list is one I worked Sorry. with. Yeah, I worked with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. There was another project in Newbury that we worked on a customized list where we got rid of some natives that Fish and Wildlife didn't feel were beneficial and listed things that really have a nice wildlife value that do well in the secondary gene area. That's that list. And so we would pick everything from that list. Density would be based on that list, but it's really going to be based on availability and taking a closer look at where the, where the voids and there may be some honeysuckle, if I remember right, there's a little bit of honeysuckle and maybe some bittersweet. That would come out and we would, we would supplement. Well, and not only this, I think we have to keep in mind that this is really not for mitigation. This is something he's doing just to enhance the property. Oh, yeah, I know. It's just when yeah. you're talking about things and you don't know what you're talking about, okay, so you do read the list. <laughs> Fair enough. No, it's fine. But yes, it's <laughs> and, and I think, it, as Doug noted at the last hearing, I had on a different project. It used to be we would just say that we submit to Doug for review and approval of plant list. But we'll submit, and if Doug feels it should come back to the whole commission, that's fine. You know, and, and we would mark up at that time a better idea of sort of where things are going to go and the sizing. And I'm trying to limit those times when the contractor comes back and says, well, what do I do here? And what do I do here? Because we left it off the plan, so. And Doug said we could do it. Yeah, yeah. So it was okay. Right. No, okay. It's like that phone you make in the plane. Um, are there any butters here? Would anyone like to speak on this project? Um, it'll be my recommendation to board then that we can, uh, grant a continue uh, that we continue this hearing until the November twentieth date. Second. All those Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Tom. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, the Red Sox won though. Was weird, you did eight two. Debra said the grants in eight. Nice. Oh, Lord. <laughs> we have we have a notice of intent to. I'm oh, sorry. We have a notice of intent to renovate and expand an existing pier of 160 square feet from Riverfront Marine at 292 High Road. Your butters. Yeah, your proof of mailing. Proof of mailing. You had to notify a butters, and you should have done it with certificates of mailing. Yes, I did do that. Okay. Okay. Um, I just got back from New York, and, I was and the engineer gave you this. Yeah. Um, well, that's that, honestly that's one of two things that's fatal: the um, the ad in the paper and the certified mailings have to take place. Uh, so that we can give you a public hearing. So okay. um, what we're going to have to do, you're just going to have to do that again. We're going to have to provide you with a new legal ed, and then you'll have to go to the assessor's office, get a certified abutters list. Everyone on that will get an abutter notification. Um, if you have a, a property owner that has multiple properties, you only need to send them one, um, and they can be sent certificate of mailing. It does not have to be return receipt. Certificate of mailing is about half the cost. If you need help with that, come on in or give me a call or send your engineer in. 
Um, you don't have a hearing, but while you're here, I might as well say that this plan here looks like a plan that was made before October 4th, 2018, because some of this proposed stuff is stuff that I think you've already done. Um, you're not yeah. putting check dams here to do a little, you know, this here. These look like they're new on the plan, but I got aerial <coughs> photography and they're in place, so those aren't new. So everything bold here stands out as something that's being proposed, not something that exists. So this plan should actually show the actual date that the plan was formed with maybe some revisions later on. But this stuff is very confusing to someone that you know is, is just looking at this plan and saying, oh, this is proposed. Um, this should be existing. So maybe that gives you some time to straighten that plan out a little bit. Um, the other thing is I think that Ed wanted to talk to you about this work here. Yeah, so it may, yeah, it may give you an opportunity to set this straight. Okay? Um, so without a public hearing, I don't want to go any further, Dave. But, um, Before we do, can you check the file just to see if maybe he gave it to me earlier? Just to see if Did you ever see that? No. Like uh, I said, okay. I, I just got back. Gotcha. Know. So someone came in and got a list for you, a certified abutters list. Okay. That's the list I'm talking about that everybody <coughs> would have gotten a butter notification. And that I don't see in here as an attachment. So maybe that never. Sure, sure, there sure. it is right there. Notice to abutters. And it talks about Riverfront Marine. It talks about you filed on 10-4 and your hearing date is tonight. So someone made them all up and got the abutters on this. I'm guessing John Hargraves did all this. Okay. Do you want to, can you get him on the phone? Okay. Um, would you like to have a couple of minutes out in the hall? And if you can get him on the phone and verify that he sent those things off, maybe he could take a picture of the, you know, that his, uh, his receipt with his certified mailings on it, mm -hmm. send it back to you. You can step up and... You know, after we do um, the Richardsons yeah. and come yeah, back in if you don't. Okay. Check the rest of the file, see if it's just kind of on there. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's all. I don't think so, Jim. This is the same thing. I just went through that. Those are the checks. I don't, I don't find it. Okay. All right, Dave, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Next one, and if he can straighten that out and get back in here before we shut the lights out, then we'll we'll hear you. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, we didn't really take on any action because we couldn't. Oh, we never open it. No, we can't open so it. So there's nothing to close. Yeah. No, nothing to move on yeah. from. Uh, we have a notice of intent to construct an addition over an existing deck and extend a living area and add a porch from Eileen Richardson at 55 Plum Island Turnpike. Good evening. How are you? to the board uh, what the project consists of? Yeah. Um, this, this is a deck here. And actually, it goes around the front of the house. Um, this was the old bathroom. 
we moved it to this side of the house to sign up. And so I want to add on over the deck to lengthen the living room. So it would be three walls and a roof. And then a deck and around the length of the house. Okay. One story. One story. Solid foundation? Yeah. Okay. Digging for a foundation? There's a block foundation out of the house now and our patch. Okay. This is Plum Bush down, so it's on the way down to Plum Island on the left hand side. The wetland is everywhere. Oh, it's in there. It's a 360 wetland. So, all right, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. This is, all ground this is just the other side. This is just the island side of Bob Lobster. Yeah, Fade 13. 13 in there. <laughs> that doesn't really show up well on the plan. What's that? That doesn't really show up well on this plan. <laughs> It's a simple. It's a simple project. He's got some plans here, so I felt a little awkward to push him into a notice of intent instead of an RDA for it. But it is ACEC underneath where the deck is going to be in the area around there. So, uh, so then, um, is there any uh, virgin soil involved? Is this? I would say that most of the area around these homes is probably filled by now. I think there's very little, very, you'll see some pockets of it down there, here, there. Maybe that's a wrong way to phrase the question. <laughs> what, yeah, what do, you, what do you mean? Um, uh, what is the, the, the amount of soil to be moved and impacted? Will there be any soil moved and impacted? Uh, well, yeah, he's going to dig a, he's coming out, what, two feet? And then the length of it is, what, 14? Uh, What's this length right here? What's that? 11, 12, 12 feet. Okay. So right now his foundation goes down like this, and he's got a deck that goes all the way to here. He's expanding out over not only his deck, but he's expanding out to here. So he's coming out two more feet, and he's going to add a foundation. So two feet by 12 feet, there's going to be a little bit of excavation. Yeah, he's got to go down four feet, he's got a four footing, um, and then build his wall up from there. So there will be a small amount of excavation. This, this is going to sit on pilings, right? So yeah. pokes, it doesn't have to be pilings, okay. uh, but pokes. Um, so there'll be no removal here. So just the, if we were to make this go through an NOI, the only thing that would happen really is that we put up a line of road control. This is an NOI. Oh, I thought you said this was an RD. You didn't want no, to make I, it No, I said I had prob because it was, um, it was a sensitive resource area, to me, it was a minor project, and I hated to push him into this, oh, but right. I did because I was afraid to let right. it go with RDA and someone have an issue with it, and then put him through two processes instead of one. Fair enough. So yeah, okay. now I'm that's why I went there in the first place. <laughs> He's okay. in this year a little as far, bit. As far as this goes in the expansion here, this is a totally tidally title, influenced area, so there's no compensatory storage required or, or needed um, for this work. I, again, I don't have any other questions or comments for him. So, so what, what, do, what, what is the grand elevation now? Do you have any sense? Uh, from the edge of your cottage down here, say from your shingles down, what, what do you got there? For, how, much you, how many cement blocks are showing? Uh, I'm going to say four. So four times eight is 32 inches high. I think that, well, just maybe I'm sure you know when, when you get a storm, what happens here? Water. I water mean, you get water up. Oh yeah. Halfway up the foundation or something. The house has been here for over 100 years. No, that's fine. Um, <laughs> all I'm getting at is if you can excavate. Yeah. I mean, and during that construction, you know, you're going to have the ground opened up, and if you do get a flooding situation, it might not be. In 78, my father had the house right after the big storm in 78. He had the house raised and um, they put the block foundation in there. So it's been there since 78. They removed the bed. I think what I'm getting at is, you know, if you do get a 
real high tide, and while you've got the ground opened up there, I mean, I won't dig it. Yeah, I, again, I think it's quite, yeah, obviously that if you've got high groundwater and you're trying to dig into it, your sides are going to collapse, you've got sand under there, you've got peat under there because of the nature of the area, yeah, you're not going to be able to hold the walls of your trench or anything under a high water situation, no doubt. No, I yeah. won't do it high water. Yeah, no doubt, you'd have to, you'd have to abandon it. Until oh, John and me are digging it anyways. He knows what he's doing. He should. He should. He's done it before. Does it, well, I mean, it's it, just, you know. It's other just, than a caution, is there a problem with that? Well, you know, I don't know if you maybe condition that, you know, the expansion of that foundation should not occur during high water, spring tide. Okay. I've been, I've been there for 77 years. I yeah. pretty much know what the tide is. I'm sure of that. I sure you don't know how the water goes. Do you, you want to? You know, is there, is there any reason to think that something would be better or worse out there? You know, in terms of... Um, I don't think anything's good out there if you get a flooding situation. Um, almost anything's going to be pretty susceptible to the hydraulic pressure because it's not... It's a still water area, it's an AE area, but it, it moves out there, it flows out there. You've right. got tides coming in and out, you've got... A, it's a tightly influenced area, so... It's, you could have some issues with about anything. Um, the last time there was a project out there, really it was done out um, closer to the roadway and they used Marapi Barrier. I didn't know that either. It's that black clock you see standing about 30 inches high with the sticks about every... What do they call it? Marapi Barrier. Marapi? Yeah. I don't... With an M. Oh. I know the stuff, I just never heard that word. Anyway, um, so then uh, is there any reason to think that like straw bales or like compost or anything like anything would bring in like rag seed. I don't know where you'd put them. Well, what you would do is you would half moon them around. So if, if we were to require a silt barrier here, you would likely start as you were working here. This would require it. You'd just dig a couple of holes by hand here. But this, you'd, you'd half moon this. You'd ring this area right here and keep everything inside of here. Uh, actually, um, right now the, the deck and uh, we built a 16 foot planter, four feet wide, and it goes all the way across to here. The shed's here, there's a wall here, this is all gravel. That's the driveway side, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel silly worrying about erosion control when if it's really gonna be a problem, you could see schedule the other way. He'll get deposition rather than... Uh, probably, yeah, yeah, he'll have about, um, Three feet or four feet of straw floating underneath. Yeah, so erosion control feels like a silly thing to talk about, but no, you know something. It, it's not. Uh, you know, I think that there should be something there, and I think that we ought to leave uh, that we should require erosion control, but leave the control up to them and make sure they control their soil. Yeah, and you're not worried about like frag or anything coming in on something odd. Well, you're always if you're worried about frag coming in on something odd, all you have to you can throw a rock and hit a frag field you can't walk through. So no, I'm not concerned with that. It's already there. <laughs> not concerned with that at all. No, they could be in frag hay bales there, and I don't think they do any damage. Point taken. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, we get we get um, ice cakes. You know, just stick in the front yard. Yep. Big trees come in. So again, any no, <laughs> any questions, concerns? Are there any abutters? Would anyone like to speak on this project? I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. So moved. Second, thank you. Bill? Yeah. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you.
doesn't have meaning more often. You can see me more. And you mean we? No, bring it open. Yeah. Okay. Um, then, David, I'm sorry that we can't hold your hearing tonight. Uh, if you need help um, with the process with finishing it up, please come on in. We can help you get it finished up, and we'll certainly see you next month. All right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Tom, we have you back here for Robert Champetti. We have a continued notice of intent to demolish the existing single-family home and construct a new single-family home from Robert Champetti at 78 Old Point Road. about the not really concom -com issue but just potential issue with the ignition source so we separated out the utility shelf so we'll have um, compressor I think it's uh, propane tank compressor, compressor. okay um, two snake two nine foot drives um, come into the parking under the structure um, we added an outdoor recreation area that also includes the walk from the bottom of the stairs which was another issue uh, the water line, sewer line shown here somewhere. Um, water. Yeah, water, and I know sewer was shown. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah, so oh, I see. Oh, okay, okay, so that, all right. Yeah. Um, you know, when it's possible, if the contractor says they need to move a vent pipe or something, you'll just have to come back with an updated plan. I, that's, move it a vent pipe. Um, yeah, pilings are shown. Uh, staircases land on two wood piles with a minimum pad uh, to comply with building. So okay. if you need to also have a pad, it would be at a minimum size of dimension that satisfies the building inspector, basically. Good. Um, let's see. We're pulling the blocks at the back, and uh, we filed the zoning in areas on the 18th that we can do all the FAR and coverage in that application process, and we're pretty confident they're in good shape. Okay. Got the file number. They've had it now for plenty of time. We've got no comments. Unless we miss something, I think you know, we're, we're ready to, to move on it. Um, I'm glad we added the clamshell patio because if you don't define an outdoor recreation space, people make one. They'll take it. Yeah. yeah. And yep. So you do that, so now the barbecue grill goes there. If they do a fire pit, it goes there. It sort of like sets up the, the logical place to do it and the rest of the area. What's that? I said, no more three months for this. Um, <laughs> you've, hit, you, you've hit everything on the list, Tom, yeah. everything that I've got here. Um, I can see it now. I didn't um, really spend too much time with this plan, um, but you've gone over it all and you've pointed it all out. Um, I don't think we had any other issues. Yeah, the only other issues that came up in the meantime was as part of the title search. There was a 1988 order of conditions for things like a concrete slab and a retaining wall. I think they were both done. Well, they may have been. I think the concrete slab is that concrete slab right here with the old water tank on it. I think there's okay. a slab underground right there. There's so, a small piece of right. concrete, and that is likely the retaining wall. You think that was permitted, that one row or two rows of cinder block? So Maybe. It's the only retaining wall on the property, so, so I, my guess okay. would be yes. All right, so I filed the COC saying that work wasn't done. If you feel like it was done satisfactorily, you could issue that one as well. Um, I also have a check for you guys. How do you like this one? one it, was to add, it was to add a 14 foot by 14 foot poured concrete slab for an above ground pool. Yeah, try doing that now. On a book ground pool? Yep. It was well, they go, was this like, yeah, were they hip to infinity pools before the rest of us? Or is this going to have it go right across? No, I'm sure this was like Sears Boulevard. And unfortunately, those will never be again, it sounds like. 
Yeah. Um, so here are the four hundred dollar filing fee for two expired orders or conditions, uh, and uh, so that's that one. If you think the work was done, I think it was done satisfactorily because clearly the town didn't go down there and screen the things. It wasn't done satisfactorily. And I think they attracted the attention of the town at various points. I would agree. I would agree with those statements. Um, yeah. So one way or the other, I would like to ask the commission as part of the process to both, you know, close a hearing, issue a decision on our permit application unless you feel there are outstanding issues, close out that old 1988 order of conditions because anything that was done under that is being undone anyway as part of this. Um, and then the other uh, certificate of compliance issue was um, one when apparently the town <coughs> went to see the judge about getting water and sewer hooked up. Um, and in that process, an order of conditions was issued for the hookup of water and sewer. The best we were able to do, because we don't have access to the inside of the structure, was we went to the city to report and we got the um, as built for protection. That's good enough for me. So we submitted this by email. I've got hard copies of what I submitted by email if you want those. Um, and we paid the filing fee. So that, we'd like to close that out. And the, the water and sewer is going to be redone anyhow as part of this uh, construction process. So we're kind of starting clean slate. Here's, this, here's the 1988 COC application. Here is the 2012 COC application with the company. Oh, that's good. I'll set up this one. Uh, well, all right, let's start out with the application at hand. Um, are there any questions or concerns? Um, I, I went down my list. I think Tom took a pretty good list last time he was here. There's nothing on my list that he didn't just address. Uh, those are the things that we asked for at the last hearing. Is there anything that's come up since then or any uh, comments or questions that you have? Hearing none, I'll go to the audience. And is there anyone out here that would like to comment on this project? then I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Move, Move to approve. Mm -hmm. Move to approve. Do I have a second? Who seconded? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank so you very much. I'll last time. Okay. We'll just take it a clean record. Yep. No, that's a good idea. Is, that is a that's the first DEP number that he mentioned with the pool and the right. That's the old order. Yeah. Yeah. That is definitely that key, just like 1985 when they just walk away. The new filing numbers come through on the same block. When I was the agent of Amesbury, I had to deal with a COC from 1971. It was permit number two. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. See? Yeah. The, the the whole filing process was on like the page. came in late, we didn't have the paperwork for them, so that, that's not a problem, but I think we can still uh, discuss them and, and vote on them tonight. Um, they're minor issues. Um, the first one is DEP number 50-241. You've heard Tom. Um, my opinion is, is that cement pad down there is likely the one that was discussed in this order, and as well as the wall. Um, it would be my recommendation that we grant the Certificate of Compliance uh, for DEP number 50-241. So moved. Second. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Uh, for record keeping, would you like me to change the check mark to satisfactorily complete and uh, initial it? You, why don't you? Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, where is that right now? Do you have I should just, you just make the teacher. I would submit to you evidence the existing conditions plan submitted with thy notice of intent did not show any of that. There were plenty of jobs. <laughs> you didn't know car parts? You didn't buy that carburetor? I didn't want In the 60s? <laughs> that building's all locked up, right? In the 60s, on the ocean side, they used a whole bunch of cars as um, trying to overdo the place. It filled the drain. The last one that we're going to discuss is the, um, can I have the paperwork back for that one because I don't have the, uh, the original order. 241. We need, uh, what we have here is a, the sewer connections for uh, the applicant, Peter Simmons, and it is DEP number 50-1100. Um, I find that Tom has provided enough proof that the connections were made, and um, regardless, they will be um, renewed for the new project. So um, I would find that this order of conditions, that the project was done in substantial compliance, and that we issue the uh, order. We issue the certificate, I should say. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, no, it, it, well, it was, a, yeah, it was pretty, it really wasn't that difficult. Yeah. It, it, 11 Riverside is more difficult for me. I, I have a harder time. Yeah, you know, oh, I get that. With that one, so. So I've got some homework on that. We'll work on it. Um, okay. I'm not sure we'll ever make the completely happy. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> as long as I'm suffering comfortably, okay. I'm good. The Red Sox won. They come back to Boston for a baseball game. Okay. Don't let us down. Don't worry. <laughs> always a pessimist. They no, always always a pessimist. no, no, I'm not going to be an optimist. The ninth inning is like every single September and August. Get late. Yeah. Get late. We have to move on. No more Red Sox. <laughs> we had a request from Colby Village to modify an, a conservation restriction that was placed on Colby Village um, when it was constructed. And one of the things the planning board tried to do was try to preserve some of the history of the site. And so that resulted in the saving or the request to save a found, of the foundation that was near the existing foundation. Uh, the house was taken off the top of it. It was filled with soil. It was nothing but a brick and mortar foundation. Um, when you've got unbalanced fill exposed to the weather inside a brick and mortar foundation, I don't need to tell you what happened to it. Um, besides that, besides it just came up out of the seams, um, it may not have been backfilled properly because there's been sinkholes out there, there's been voids that these folks have had to deal with for quite some time. So they went to the planning board and they discussed it and the um, planning board went to Lisa Mead and Lisa Mead said that um, there's a whole long list of things that she talks about and she explains conservation restrictions who has the right to modify them, um, that they sit now with the Conservation Commission. Um, she's got about seven whereases, and they lead down to the, the Conservation Commission. Um, uh, the grantor or its successors of science shall have the right, subject to the following conditions, to remove this brick foundation. Um, so in essence, that's what all this paperwork is. Uh, the, um, the Condo Association or the Development Association has met and uh, come to their own vote um, relative to removing that, and we have, um, we have that vote on record. Uh, and this is Lisa's paperwork that would allow the removal of that. We sign it. Um, we're going to have to get a different sign sheet off her because this one's somewhat dated um, because of the members that are on it, so we'll change that. Once we sign it, 
um, it will go to the um, Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen will sign it, and then it'll go to the uh, EOEA uh, for their signature. Um, so we're only the first step. Um, but it would be my recommendation that we grant Colby Village the ability to remove that foundation, um, and uh, we can also put any conditions on it that we see. Well, it, 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 the whereas is just give ownership, they give deed references, it's, it's um, you're, you're perfectly um, willing, I mean, I'm perfectly willing to give you the time to take a look at that and, and certainly read anything you want on it. I probably should have prepared about seven copies instead of one. There's only one that wants to read it. <laughs> Don't worry, you only have two questions. <laughs> <laughs> he has got you. Who owns the land that the foundation's on? The, um, associate, the association owns the land. Is it a common area or whatever? Yes. Yes. Uh, this was the only piece of property that the Conservation Commission has authority over within the, the units, um, you know, up adjacent to the units. The whole rest of it is on the periphery, you know, where the septic system is and, and out back. This isn't a part of the, the open space. This, isn't part of the open. this is not part of the open space. No. Should we say they have to put in clean fill after removing it? No car park. No. <laughs> or tires. <laughs> Who knows what the existing fill is? Uh, right. Not. You don't know. Yeah. yeah. My guess would be that portions of the home might have yeah. gone down in there. Yeah. And maybe that's why you have some sinkholes. Are they going to just dig out the top of the wall? Um, cover what, it with loom. what is the proposal? Um, um, well, we you know we went to our landscapers and they gave us a, a price of two thousand dollars to remove the bricks and smooth the land. Great enough. Great okay. Enough. So Did they do any drawing? Is there a narrative to that effect? Um, well, no, no, really. no, no it's just a just a description. Well, if, if you have something to that effect, it will. Um, eliminate my need to, to come up with something and make up something. I mean, I can say that this will come down and can only be graded uh, no, no different than the adjacent grades. They'll be connected. Um, but if there's a plan for that, uh, I mean, you must have given this guy, before he gave you a price, you must have given him some, some he parameters. Came, he, well, he came and looked at it. You know, there are landscapers and they're, they're working every day. So they came and took a look at it and said, and their proposal was just to remove the bricks and and smooth it over so that it, you know, so that the grade is smooth and okay. the equipment um, can go over. It wouldn't, um, it wouldn't change the elevation of the ground. The ground is, is level with the uh, top of the, the wall. Mm -hmm. It removed the wall and then graded off smoothly and leave it at the same That makes that perfect happens. sense to me and I understand what you're saying, but um, I've had these conversations with before and we think there's a meeting of the minds and the next thing you know, things have gone awry. Um, so really, all as I want is either a narrative or a picture from him um, that states exactly what he's going to do for work. Okay. All right? And then we can reference that um, and move it forward because we can put any conditions. Um, and the attorney's opinion was that any conditions we want to put on this, we can. Um, I don't want to get overly burdensome, but I just want to have a meeting of the mind, that's all. Right. Um, something in the line that you're thinking of is that, I don't know, five years, ten years, fifteen years, when it's a whole different set of parties involved, perhaps, that if there was a way, if we could get it um, put on the registry of deeds, made a book and page kind of thing that we can insert, like the plan has been, or, you know, something to that effect, where you can, if everybody loses their paperwork, or if the flood happens and all the paperwork and the files goes away, it's not just the plan that, you know, John Smith Esquire put together, it's the plan that John Smith Esquire put together, and can be found here as well as, you know, in this so you would want this pl this plan it's, it's to be an attachment to this document that would move forward with the document. Yeah, the, the more consolidated it could be and the more self-referential it could be. Um, and I know the registry of deeds is a pain and that's a bother. Uh, but that would be sort of the highest form of that idea. Well, I, I think what I would do with it then is I would get this information from these folks and when it comes time to talk to town attorney, I would ask her where the proper place for this would be. Right. She could instruct us where that would be. Just so that we know, you know, this is your meeting of the minds idea. If everybody loses all of their paperwork, we don't like, just have this and then a mystery plan. Don't, we have the, this. don't 
conservation restrictions for the registry already? Yeah, they're going to have to. Well, and it's going to be filed. Uh, right. Already. The the point that I'm making there has more to do with um, almost like the as built versus the plan. You know, uh, which version of the plan gets recorded? You know, the one you intend or the one that gets changed. Yeah. That that kind of. I see. The only thing there would be no change to the topo. Topo would be the same, right? Because we're not going to we're not going to lower it or raise it. We're going to keep it the same. It just would be yep. smoothed off uh, briefly. You know, just just very. Maybe you know, that's maybe that's a better <coughs> idea. And, it, and then they could, you could just you could circle it and say there's nothing there. It was removed. Well, that, when what you just said that might actually be simpler um, in my head anyway <laughs> um, would be just a really good narrative. You know, yeah. built in, and then when the plan is done, then there's a set of ad builds that goes and gets slipped into the, uh, the file at the end. So then you've got a long. I would, I, you know something. I wouldn't mind a picture. I don't know if I, uh, if the board would need to send an engineer right here to do it as built. Well, no. I mean, this right. is a, this is such a minor. Um, this is such a minor, and I understand that things go awry all the time. That's why I want at least a little defining language. But I don't want to get too carried away with this. If you saw this on site, you'd be shocked at what little we're talking about, really. It's not much, right? Uh, no, I totally believe you. Yeah. It's, um, you could probably pull the bricks out of here by hand in an afternoon and throw a wheelbarrow full of soil over it, yeah. honestly. I mean, is, it's not a big deal. It's just, you know, I don't want to, in 15 years, you know, visualizing what might confuse somebody who's reading this and make a fuss over it. The, way, the more we can do now to smooth it, make it, you know, our grandchildren's children kind of. It's too late. I'm more confused than when we started. I should just go home. It's too late. We're going home. It's too late, Brian. All right. I, I think we know where we're all going with this. Um, the okay. board we, will 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 vote. We'll put this to a vote in a minute, um, and then it will go to the town attorney. Um, they'll all come back in and sign the proper sign-off sheet that she gives us. Once that's done, it'll go to the Board of Selectmen. Same process will happen, Board of Selectmen, and then they'll send it off to EOEA for their signature. Okay. You, you have no idea how long that process is going to take for you. I thought this one was going to be shorter <laughs> than this, Pat. So, I, yeah, I, I, guess, I, I guess the answer is no. Okay. <laughs> so. okay, and so meanwhile, you know, you said you want some kind of a narrative. So when would you want that? And I think, could I just email that to you? Absolutely, yeah, okay. absolutely. And, and, and as soon as it becomes available to yeah. you, okay. you know, to tuck it into the process sooner rather than later yeah. would be a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think certainly before it would go off and we'd say, here, we're done with it to the Board of Selectmen, I would want it to be attached at that point. Yeah. EOEA, that's the State Department, right? That's yeah. the state yeah. Well, that's the um, Executive Office Executive of, Office of, of uh, Energy and Environmental Affairs, yes. Um, so I will entertain a motion to, uh, if we haven't already done this yet, I talk so long, I've, um, uh, I will entertain a motion to allow uh, the Colby Village to remove the protected foundation uh, and to smooth over the land. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome, folks. Good night. Good night. Sorry. No, no, no. I, we're the ones that did the talking. You sat there very patiently. So. <laughs> Can I help you with something? I was just here to sit in. I'm a wetland scientist from up in New Hampshire, and I live in Newbury. I wanted to see how you guys are okay. meeting. I, I, I had no more on the agenda, and I've got a warm body in the audience, and I was like, thinking, I, I was uh, talking to like, maybe she's in a butter that doesn't want this one. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we don't cause you to choose another so, yeah, I was going to say, did you, did you learn anything? You're moving out of town? Yeah, What's happening? I'm not leaving you. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Where's he here? I will entertain a motion. I just want to just mention sure. something. We don't have to discuss it tonight, but Brian got into the, the idea of monumentation of, you know, mm. buffer zone areas. It might comment in other municipalities. 
something we might think about a little bit and come up with some more formal policy kind of. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. There was a, I, I came in and I had a talk with Doug Wild about um, Sweetie Dog, Sweetie Tail, um, mm -hmm. and um, I have seen enough uh, abuse of a lack of rules, regs, laws, whatever, that you know anything we could do that would be um, preemptive and forward thinking rather than reactionary. Thinking more in terms of uh, what what did you say the build out in town was like fifty percent? Not even that. Yeah. Well, probably forty five. Uh, you know, we, we would double our population. Uh, yeah, which just smells to me like eventually someone's going to notice and start you know subdividing and building and subdividing and building and you know. Wait till you know. Wait till the the time we get water and sewer. We get sewer around here. Uh, I don't think you've got to build more problem now. Title five is a pretty good uh, zoning tool. Anyways, maybe that's some, something we can discuss later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you ready, no? Yeah. Are we ready to close? Are we ready to close the public hearing? Sure. Yeah. Public meeting. Yeah. Yeah. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.